Central Coast section first round playoff game. We are here with number four and five seeds. Number four seed, the host Palo Alto Vikings, and the number five seed, the Sarah High Padres, coming down from San Mateo. Uh, good evening, to everybody. I'm Andrew Jensen alongside Valentin Escanuela. And looking at these matchups, it, it, it should be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Uh, Andrew, we got we got two teams, two two different styles of play. We one one team likes to keep it on the ground, the other one likes to air it out. And we look at these st these, these these season stats, and it's going to be a game that's going to come down to whoever, whoever makes the least mistakes defensively. Both of them very stifling. Every Palo Alto Vikings allowing only 19.2 points per game, while Sarah, on the other hand, only allowing 15.6 per game. So it's going to be a defensive battle on the field. Now we look at the offensive side, and both teams put up big numbers. Uh, 220 yards passing for Palo Alto, averaging per game, and 194 on the ground. So a very well-balanced uh, attack there for Palo Alto. Total yards every game, 422 uh, total yards per game offensively. Uh, for, for, for the Padres, for Serra, they come in here averaging 320 yards on the, on the ground, a total of 370 yards, total yards for the game. Uh, it's going to be a game where... Whoever controls the ball the best, whoever protects the ball the best, is probably going to come out with the victory. And another thing to keep an eye on as well is the weather here. It's been raining all day up here in Northern California, up in Palo Alto. Right now, it's not. So right now, it, they have no, they have pretty decent field conditions to deal with, other than a little bit of a, a slick field out there. But uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that uh, the rain doesn't start to come down for our own sake and for the players as well, because that will really kind of mess up their game plans. But if rain does become an a, a factor, you'd have to point to Sarah to have in the advantage because they obviously like that, that style of football where they can run the get, run the ball and kind of control the clock. Meanwhile, Palo Alto likes to throw it, and with rainy conditions, obviously it's a little bit more difficult to accomplish. Palo Alto does like to throw the ball, but they also have some guys that can also run it as well. they got guys like Malcolm Thomas who, you know, has three, 666 yards on the ground rushing, 13 TDs, guys that can make things happen on the field. Uh, Jay Sean Gates uh, Mouton and Justin Gates Mouton, both twins, both extremely great, great athletes, and they can really get things done here for Palo Alto tonight. Now, talking about the star player for Palo Alto, it's uh, Keller Chris, the junior quarterback, and this guy has prototypical size for any college in the nation. In fact, pretty much everybody wants him. Keller Chris, the junior quarterback, 6'4", 230, and has put up outstanding numbers. Outstanding numbers, 51% completion rate, and has thrown for over 2,200 yards. Uh, here in the season. We're going to step aside for the National Anthem. We'll come back with all the action here on PlayOnSports.com. Good evening and welcome back to Palo Alto High School here in Palo Alto, California, as we are ready for, or just moments away from kickoff for this first uh, round matchup, Central Coast section of Palo Alto and Sarah and the number four and five seeds going at it. Should be very entertaining and really could go either way in this, in this matchup. Both of these two teams, uh, Andrew, are, are coached by, by two good coaches. I mean, Errol Hansen taking on uh, the lead for Palo Alto and, and Patrick Walsh for uh, Sarah. 
two well-coached teams, two teams that have play players on their team that can make big things happen for them. They're electric. They can put up numbers. Uh, it's going to be a very, very exciting matchup tonight. And it looks like Palo Alto, who goes by Pally. So Pally will uh, be getting the ball first, going from left to right there in your home green uniforms with the white helmets. Meanwhile, Sarah, obviously the other team with the all-white uniforms. Um, and they will be kicking off to start this ball game. Anthony Tom is going to kick this one off for Sarah. And Malcolm Davis and Jay Sean Gates Mouton back deep to return the kickoff. And we are just moments away from uh, this first round matchup. And again, should be exciting. Looking forward to it. So Tom's making the final calls uh, before he gets this one kicked off. Players are lining up, and both sides here, both fans are making noise, ready for the opening. And here we go. Ball is in the air. And it's going to be fielded at the goal line. And that is going to be fielded by Malcolm Davis. And Davis is tripped up near the 22-yard line. And that is where Palo Alto will start this drive from their own 22. Something to look for tonight, too, Andrew, is going to be the fact that the, the surface on the field is very, very wet. So that's going to you know, cause the, 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 the football to be wet, which you might have a couple of uh, fumbles, a couple of turnovers here. And you got to be real careful if you're one of the running backs for either team. And again, it's been raining pretty much all day up here in Northern California. It has stopped for the moment. We'll see if uh, that continues. First play of the game is going to be a handoff on the, the right side, and it looks like a pickup of a yard or two, just depending on the spot. And that was Tolbert with the carry, with his first carry. Matt Tolbert, one of the stars on this team, had over 1,000 yards rushing this season. And there you see Palo Alto beginning with the run play, trying to establish that run game to go ahead and set up Chris to be able to throw that ball downfield and find that open receiver. Keller Chris, the quarterback, as we mentioned, the junior, and uh, one of the better quarterbacks you're going to find here on the West Coast being looked at by pretty much everybody. And uh, we'll have his choice come next year who he wants to uh, play his college career with. But he is going to get sacked here on his first drop back attempt, and he'll lose about three. So Sarah's defense all over Chris there, bringing up third down and about 12. Great penetration there by the Sarah defense coming in and making a hit. And, and Chris is the, one of those uh, quarterbacks. He reminds me of Ben Roethlisberger, you know, 6'4", 230 pounds, big body. It's going to take more than just one hit to bring him down. Yeah, he almost got out of that one, but uh, the host, the, the second wave of Sarah players came in and, and brought him down. So a big third down here on the opening drive just underway here on PlayOnSports.com. Glad you have tuned in wherever you may be listening from tonight. Third down and 12. Chris under center. And he is looking to throw a far, throw fire on the far side, and it is bobbled and incomplete. So incomplete, trying to find Jayshon Gaten Mouton, Gates Mouton, but uh, falls incomplete, brings up fourth and 12, and Sarah's defense forces a three and out on the opening drive. Well, Sarah doing a good job of containing the line of scrimmage with the run game in those first two downs, and they, they, guessed, uh, they guessed right on that one. Third down, they had a plast plate, and they only rushed three. They dropped back the rest, and we were able to go ahead, and even if he would have caught that ball, it would have been stopped short of the first down. Chris, also the punter for this Viking team. He's standing at his own five, and we have a couple players back deep for Sarah. We have Aesop Winston and Josh Cordova back deep. High kick from Chris, and it's going to be a fair catch. And that was uh, Kava Maka back there, excuse me, who uh, was back there with Winston, and he'll call a fair catch at the 41, and that is where the Padres will start their opening drive of this playoff game. Well, so far, it's just what we expected, a defensive battle, three and out there for Pally. Uh, Sarah does a great job containing that line of scrimmage and getting the stops needed to go ahead and get the ball back on, on offense. Just underway, 10-27 left here in the first quarter on PlayOnSports.com. Palo Alto went three and out. Now Sarah getting their first crack at it here at the 41. They're led by their quarterback, Zach Kazakov. And Kazakov will hand the ball off. And a big hole there, it looks... Uh, Eric Redwood, who will pick up about seven, and it brings up second and three. Well, Eric Redwood, he's averaging 141 yards per game on carries, and uh, this, is a, this is a very dangerous player for Sarah. You know, he has he's rushed for over 1,400 yards so far around the season, has 20 touchdowns, so look for this guy to have a big game here tonight. We approach the 10-minute mark here in the first quarter. Zach Kazakov, the senior quarterback, has it second and three. Hands it off on an end around over to Angelo Arco. And Arco is brought down after a pickup of about a yard, maybe a yard and a half, bringing up third down and a long one, we'll call it. Great pursuit there by the defensive side of Palo Alto, 
making that stop short of the first down. So third down and a long one, and the Vikings have a chance to uh, force a quick three, or at least make an early decision uh, for the Sarah coaching staff if they're able to come up with a stop here on third and short. So Kazakov will line up under center as he will do a majority of this game. Hands it off. It looks like a Redwood, the ball carrier, and Redwood is stopped in his tracks and brought down. His four of progress will give him a gain of about a half a yard, but he'll be short. It's going to be fourth down and less than a yard. Andrew Frick. Andrew Frick came up and just made a big hit and took him back. Six feet, 205 pounds. He said, you're not going to get past the first down marker, son. And uh, took him down for a loss. It'll be a fourth down and short here for and they're, and they're going for it. And Coach Walsh rolling the dice early here on fourth down and short. It's going to be a pitch. And the Vikings are all over that. Redwood had nowhere to go. And he is tripped up for a loss of a couple. And the Vikings defense comes up huge. It was a fake handoff and then a pitch to Redwood, but nowhere for him to go. A nice job on the Palo Alto defense because staying home, staying at home and reading that play nicely and making the big big stop. Now, here, here's my question here. If you're Coach Walsh from the coaching staff of Sarah, it's fourth down and short. And I know you're a running team, but at the same time, your defense just forced a three down. You have a chance to punt and pin them deep and, and get them back. But now you give this potent offense the ball inside your own territory. Well, this is, these are the gambles you, gotta, you, you make as a coach. Uh, and Coach Walsh took a gamble. And in this case, you know, he was unsuccessful, but – you know, they, 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 he, he trusts his defense to be able to make another stop here. So Chris will hand the ball off on their second possession. And that was Tolbert, who will pick up about five. A nice pickup on first down, second and five for the Vikings as they are inside Sarah territory at the Sarah 44. Well, the ball just uh, inside Sarah territory. And, you know, he turned it over on downs to, to Palo Alto. Good idea, maybe. We'll see uh, We'll see if that was uh, a gamble that, you know, is not going to cost them. That's one of those things that if he makes it, great call by the coach. But if you don't, then you get second guess. And, and I agree. I, I think he made the right call. As I was just playing devil advocate there. As for the second down pitch to Gates Mouton. That was uh, Justin Gates Mouton who picks up a few and brings up third down and two. So here we go again with another big third down. Another big third down, and the Sarah defense doing a great job of trying to contain that line of scrimmage and giving them minimal yardage on those runs. But this is a dangerous squad in Palo Alto. You're going to go ahead and run those 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 plays to try to draw the uh, defensive backs a little bit closer or a little bit further out. And what's going to happen is that if 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 you get caught off guard, he's going to go ahead and throw a pass, and Chris can go ahead and hit any yeah. target from any 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 yardage on this field. This is uh, play action territory, I, I would say, as it may be four down territory, and Chris will hand the ball off instead. He gets it to Eric Anderson, and Anderson is brought down right at the line. It looks like he may be, yeah, he is going to be just short. And here we go with the decision on the other end, but this one a little bit different since you're inside Sarah territory. They're going to say fourth down, fourth and less than a yard. Looks like the Vikings are lining up to go for it. Well, this is this is no man's territory at the high school level. Yeah. So with with Chris at uh, 6'4", 230 pounds, look for him to keep it on the quarterback keeper and just lean forward for the one yard. That would be the call I make. But Chris is also the punter, so this is uh, we saw him booting up before in warmups, and he's able to pin people back. But here they go making a gutsy call. And again, I think this is a little bit different since it's inside the 40. And instead, they will hand it off. And tripped up near the marker. It's going to depend on the spot. I believe that was Tolbert. That was Tolbert who got it. And he was, let's see. Uh, it's all going to depend on the spot. And I think he has it based on where he is now. They're going to bring out the chains. But they will have to measure this one. Yeah, my guess. It's right on the yeah, dot. It's literally right on it. If he gets it, he got it by the nose of the football. And here we go. Chains coming out. Big moment in this game as Sarah was just denied on fourth down. And let's see if uh, the Vikings were also denied. And he is short by an inch. And it gives it back to Sarah. So both teams get stopped on fourth down and shorts. And it'll give the Padres the ball back with 6.39 left in the first quarter. We have a scoreless ball game. And there you go. That gamble by Coach Hansen pays off. Excuse me, Coach Walsh pays off. He gives it back to Palo Alto inside, just at the 50-yard line. And his squad able to hold on four downs there and gets the ball back in very, very good field position. So here we go as Kazakov will get the ball back. And he will pitch to the far side, or to the near side, I should say. And breaking free, heading into Viking territory is Calva Cassidy. And Cassidy picks up a huge gain on first down and will give Sarah 
first down inside Pally territory. So that play working on that pitch, Cassidy getting his uh, first carry, and Cassidy is another one of those players that uh, is able to run the football. They have a number of players on this roster that have racked up you know, decent yards throughout this year. So first and 10 from the 44, 632 remaining. Fumble on the pitch, and we'll see who recovers it. Palo Alto says they have it. I believe they do, as it was fumbled right in front of their bench. Referees are going to untangle everybody, but it is going to be Pally football. And Sarah, after picking up that huge gain, they fumble it there. Redwood not able to corral it. Well, that's one of the concerns that, you know, we were talking about before the game started is that that, that surface is wet. We, were walking, we walked on it a little while ago there, Andrew, and the ball's going to be wet. So any pitch that comes to you, if you don't get a hand on it and a handle on it and bring it in quick, that ball can easily slip out, and that's exactly what happened on that play. And now Pally gets it back in very, very good field position. First and 10 from their own 44. So catching a break after that failed fourth down. They get the ball back here, and it looks like they're going to play fake. Chris fires over the middle and has it complete. And breaking free inside Sarah territory is a big pickup from uh, Deontay Williams, who has over 400 yards receiving this year. And we'll add to that with that... Uh, Nice play fake by Chris, and he had to hit that perfectly. Well, Sarah had great coverage on the outsides, but that middle of the field was wide open for his receiver, and he just hit him right on the numbers, man. I mean, you talk about a, a quarterback that can go ahead and sling that. He threw that on a rope. So it gives it first down. I had a feeling they're going to go with that play, act, play action there after the turnover with that momentum, and they keep the momentum on their side on first and 10 from the 37. And off now. Trying to break down the other side is Tolbert, and Tolbert is able to pick up close to nine yards as he is finally brought down near his sideline, and it'll bring up second and short. So you can see that the momentum has clearly switched after that fumble back over to Pally. Kava Maka coming up and making the tackle there, a defensive back for the Sarah, for the Sarah Padres. So saving it from being a first down, but nonetheless, a second and short here now for Palo Alto. So second and one, another uh, perfect position here for maybe that play action on second and one at the Padre 29-yard line. Chris to under center. And he is going to throw on second and short. Fires to Tolbert on the flat. And Tolbert has room to run, and he is in the end zone. Touchdown, Pally. As Matt Tolbert takes it in from 28 yards on the flat screen. And just like that, Pally marches down and gets the first score of this ball game. A flat screen, but he, didn't need, he did not need any blocks as he had enough speed to go ahead and hit the corner. And as soon as he turned, he was off to the races into the end zone and got into the end zone for the touchdown. So great job there for, for the Pally for the Pally squad. And so the Vikings here will attempt the extra point. It's going to be James Fogue coming in, and we'll see if he can make this a 7 nothing lead. Folks, extra point attempt is up and good. 7 nothing is the score. Pally on top of Sarah here on PlayOnSports.com. Do you want to watch your more of your school's great matchups? Like the game you are enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports school broadcast program to help the program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SVP. I'm Andrew Jensen alongside Valentina Escanuela up here in Palo Alto, California, where Palo Alto High School take it on Sarah in this first round matchup of the Central Coast section playoffs. Winner will get the winner of Terranova and Bellarmine, who are playing right now, and we'll try to get you updates on that one as the night progresses. But as it is right now, Pally up 7 nothing with 5.07 left here in the first half. And Sarah will get the ball back. They had momentum and they had good field position up until that turnover. So we'll see if they're able to get some of that back. So Pally's defense up until that big run before the fumble was uh, playing pretty lights out. Usually that momentum from the defensive side turns into the offensive side. And that's exactly what Pally did. They capitalized. And the kickoff is going to sail into the end zone for a touchback. That was booted down there. And it will be first and 10 from the 20 for the Padres. Well, with 5.07 left here in the first quarter play, plenty of football left here for Sarah to go ahead and 
you know, make something happen offensively. You don't really have to score. It's just getting that offensive drive to start flowing and start gelling with, with your team. So you know, a little bit of uh, uh, maybe nerves on the field still. Shake that off and uh, get something going here offensively. And a decent crowd here on this damp night here at uh, Palo Alto High School right next to Stanford University. On first down, option play. Ball pitched out to the far side and a big pickup. And it's going to be a close to a gain of 19. And that looks like that was uh, Angelo Arco who uh, picks up that big pickup on the on the option play. So just what Sarah was looking for there, a big pickup on first down. Well, that's the second time that the Palo Alto Vikings have uh, bit on that fake pit, on the fake handoff and then the pitch. So maybe a play that they might want to go to more often. Kazakov hands the ball off up the middle on the fake bootleg as he hands it off. And it'll be a pickup of five. So a big pickup there on first down by Eric Redwood, who gets five, second and five now for the Padres. Eric Redwood goes 5'8", 175 pounds, but he runs from north to south there. And uh, one of those powerful runners as well. He puts his shoulders up, gets his, sh his, 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 uh, his pads leveled down, and, and gets usually four or five yards every single, every single time he touches that ball. So second and five, 419 left here in the first quarter. A pitch to Redwood on the far side, or on the near side, I should say. That was uh, Cassidy. Check that. Cava Cassidy. I'm all over the place on that play. Bring it up. Uh, looks like you'll have enough for the first down. Move the chains. First and 10 near midfield. It'll be at the 49-yard line. So Sarah able to respond thus far after that uh, touchdown drive by the Vikings after that turnover. They have marched the ball to midfield. And a handoff up the middle and breaking free is Redwood. And brought down near the 10 yard line. He'll be brought down at the 13 is where they're going to say he went out. And a huge pickup. The biggest run thus far for the Padres. Eric Redwood brings his team inside the red zone for the Vikings. And Eric Redwood does what doing what he does best, going right through the middle of the of the line of scrimmage and you know great credit the offensive line for opening up that hole for him to get through and after that he hits afterburners and if it wasn't for Jay Sean Gates Mouton, he's in, in the end zone for six. And Eric Redwood had twenty touchdowns on the season. Very close to another one right there, but uh, comes up short. And the handoff a fake handoff, that's uh, Kazakov who fakes the handoff and takes it himself untouched from 13 yards out. So Kazakov with a beautiful fake is an extra point away now from tying this game up. And what a great job by Kazakov. You talk about being able to fool the team with your handoffs and your fake fake handoffs and fake fake pitches. And, and it, it's one of those things that Kazakov does really well. He hides the ball, the ball well to be able to fool the squad to be able to be, get, get those big open holes and, and get into the end zone for six. So Anthony Thomas will come in and attempt the extra point, but they do this offset uh, formation. Seeing how the defense lines up, they're actually going to run this one in, try to run it in for two, and they're going to be short. As the ball was snapped to, to Fia Malapii, and uh, he tried to take it in himself and just kind of scooped it away at the last minute, just trying for a, a miraculous play, but they're going to come up short, seven to six. They run that... That play, if you watch University of Oregon, you're very familiar with that. On the first score, they always line up on an offset formation with the whole team off to the side, and then they look to see if there's a possibility for that two-point conversion. If not, they'll bring the, the line back, and they'll just kick the extra point. They thought they had it there. They come up short, and just like that, they, uh, momentum has stalled a little bit as they had a chance to tie it up. Instead, they will be uh, trailing by a point. Coach Patrick Walsh, he's here to play a game of football, and you know we've already seen him take take uh, two two make two decisions for his team where you know the two point conversion here obviously it was missed that one hurts them uh, the last one on the fourth down situation they take it uh, they get held short but then they come back and they get the ball back so so far being very aggressive offensively trying to put those points on the board Malcolm Davis and Jay Sean Gates Mouton back deep for the Vikings seven six our score Pally on top three thirty four left here in the first quarter. Tom's kickoff is up, and Gates, no, it's going to be Davis who uh, returns the kick, and he'll be tripped up just beyond the 20. 
and it'll be about the 22 or so where they spot that. And it'll be first and 10 Pally from the 20, their own 22. A 7-6 Pally lead, and when Pally uh, has been averaging 41 points per game and Sarah has been averaging 36 points per game, uh, I'm sure we're going to see a couple more scores here before this half is over. So we'll see if we see uh, Chris looking to throw on this drive as he's has attempted a lot. He has that touchdown pass on that uh, flat screen to Tolbert, and then that play-action pass uh, before that. They will hand it off to Tolbert, and he's going to be tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Great pursuit there by Sarah. I and that was Peter uh, Tapulotu with the tackle. Tolbert gets back, uh, loses maybe about a half a yard on that. Didn't really hear a whistle on the crowd here. He got up and tried to run again, and the uh, Viking faithful were cheering him on to keep going, and then the referee just emphatically threw, uh, blew the whistle to uh, stop play. So 2.50 left here in the first quarter. Second down and a long 10 after that uh, short loss. Tolbert again will get the carry, and this time he is bottled up and lost a couple. And he'll bring up third down, and we'll call it uh, – about 12 and a half after that uh, run that went for a loss there by Tolbert. Well, that was read perfectly by the Sarah defense as the safeties came out of their position and came in as soon as the ball was, was handed off. And that's one of the things that you got to be careful if you're defense. If you uh, play action fakes and that ball gets uh, thrown into the middle of the field, you're going to get beat for a long, long yardage. So big third down. We'll call it third and 12. Chris, two wideouts on each side, play action, under pressure, escapes it. Now looking to run, has some room, but tripped up at the last minute. Picks up about six, but he'll be short. He'll bring up fourth down and six, and they'll have to put this one away. A shoelace tackle there by Tyson Terreros by the Sarah defense to go ahead and bring him down. And, and Chris is not an easy guy to bring down, so I don't know how he tripped him up, but he managed to get his hand out and bring him down just short of the first down. And Chris will boot this one away. He'll be standing at about his 10-yard line, and we'll have Calva Cassidy back deep to uh, return this punt, along with uh, Nick Maka is back there as well. High kick. And the punt is muffed, and it looks like it's recovered by the Vikings. That looks like Drew Ryder was there at the right time as – Punt was muffed, and Ryder jumped on it, and it's going to be Viking football. Well, that's one of those things that where you, where the ball is coming end over end, it's very difficult to catch because it's it's. I mean, that ball was coming really really fast, line drive style kick, and he tried to run up to it, and, and it, when he hit him in the chest, it just right, bounced right off his chest. So when that ball is coming end over end, if he hits anywhere in the pad, it's probably going to bounce off, and if you don't hold on to it, it's going to definitely be a fumble. And Pell also once again capitalizing on. On a turnover. Yeah, they'll get it now inside Sarah territory. We got the 46 yard line. As Chris will line up under center and he will throw on first down. And will go deep, looking for his wide out and has him inside the five. And got that to Jason Gates Mouton for a huge pickup and he'll be brought down, it looks like, at the three yard line I believe is where they're going to mark that It'll be first and goal from the three and he put that on the money that, that's just unfair I mean that <laughs> wow. is just unfair at the high school level Woo. when you have a kid that can put the ball he was he was double covered and one guy was running with him step by step then he put the ball right where he needed oh, wow. to and uh, Mouton making a great job of getting the ball and going out of bounds right inside the five yard line that was I mean the, all you can say is wow that was just perfectly thrown and caught in stride Give credit to Mouton for coming up with that one as well. Quarterback keeper, Chris trying to catch the, guard, the team, uh, Sarah, off guard, and it looks like he'll be just short. He'll be second and goal from the one-yard line. So they'll have it, uh, Chris getting the play call from the side, and I wouldn't be surprised if they tried the exact same play here. 7-6 the score. Palo Alto on top of Sarah as we are winding down the first quarter. 49 seconds remaining, and... As Chris gets in from a yard out and extends the lead to 13-6 with the extra point pin. And you talk about a smart quarterback there. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage, was not into the end zone, and somehow he managed to extend his arms and get the ball to cross the plane and gets a touchdown here for the Palo Alto Vikings. The folk will come in now and 
attempt the extra point and try to extend the lead up to eight with 37 seconds remaining here in that first quarter. And on both turnovers thus far in the game, the Vikings have marched right down and capitalized. Snap is good, kick is up, and the extra point is perfect. 14 to six, our score with 37 seconds remaining. The Vikings on top of the Padres. Play on Sports is on Facebook on, and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to links to great highlights. Follow us on Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live or on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playon network. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. I'm Andrew Jensen alongside Valentin Escanuela as we are winding down the first quarter. And it's been a game of momentum with uh, turnovers really telling the story in this one. As Foe getting ready to kick off, and it's going to be Angelo Arco and Redwood, Eric Redwood back deep. I'm just amazed on both turnovers. The Vikings have just went all out and made it look easy. At this level of, of, of the game here, once you get into playoffs, Andrew, it's 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 those 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 mistakes are going to kill you. And when you're making mistakes against a team like Palo Alto, you know Palo Alto will be able to capitalize every single time. Folks, kick will be fielded by Arco. He'll grab it. He's across the ten, makes the man miss, and tries to get to the side, and stays on his feet, and it'll finally be brought down at the 37-yard line, so a good return from Arco, giving the Padres a little bit of momentum here towards the end of the first quarter, trying to uh, get back into this. But going back to those turnovers, turnovers are obviously never a good thing, but on that last one, it was on a punt. You're going to get the ball back, and you give it right back to the offense, and they, they capitalize. The other one, you just got done off a big run. You got deep inside, or somewhat deep inside of uh, Palo Alto territory, and you turned it over. And like you said, in playoff matchups, you just can't do that. And Redwood gets the carry, makes a man miss, a big pickup. Still going and finally brought down near the 35. They're going to say he went down, I believe, at the 34. And Redwood really impresses me. Redwood is a very, very fast runner. He's got great speed. He's got great agility. He's got great vision. He saw that hole. It was only open for a matter of seconds, took it, and was free to run for another 20 yards. And I love the way he runs. He runs and he switched the ball from the left hand to the right hand because he was being tackled from the left side. So great job protecting that ball. 13 seconds left. They're able to get another snap off. Ball is pitched to the far side, and that is Kava Cassidy. And Cassidy picks up a few, brings up uh, second down and eight, but that will be the final play of the first quarter. So after one quarter, it's Pally 14 and Sarah 6 here on PlayOnSports.com. So second quarter will uh, resume here in just a moment, but let's uh, review that first quarter really quick. It's really a quarter of momentum. <laughs> I mean, every time someone seemed to take the momentum, they capitalized on it, and that's really where we are right now, 14-6. And that's, that's the kind of football that you're going to see from these two teams, two offenses that can obviously score points, two defenses that can go ahead and stop them. But tonight it looks like we're going to be going back and forth. Uh, Palo Alto comes in, and now – uh, Sarah coming back with a decent drive here offensively, so uh, I think I think it's going to come down to whoever has the ball yeah. last here whoever tonight. Whoever can take care of it is probably going to go ahead and, and, and win this game. And so far, uh, taking care of the ball, Palo Alto has done a really good job of doing well, that. Well, you think about it because Palo Alto has yet to turn the ball over. They failed on a fourth down and one conversion, but Sarah also has failed on a fourth down and one, and they have two turnovers. So right now, though, they're looking. They have a second down and a short eight at the 31-yard line of the Vikings. So they are in great position here to get right back in it and possibly tie it up if uh, they elect to go for two if they get into the end zone. So handoff to Arco on the end around. He is bottled up. He'll be brought down for a short loss. He'll bring up third down and long. Third and nine after Arco is tripped up in the backfield. Excellent penetration there by Larry Allen of Palo Alto coming in and making a big hit. Went right through the A-gap and took him down immediately. So third down and nine. got to think this is probably four down territory for Sarah. You don't necessarily have to pick it up all here on, on one chunk as they have it at the 33-yard line. It would be a 50-yard field goal if they elected to kick it from there, which I don't think they will. 
So they'll line up here. They'll have two receivers out on the far side. They're going to throw. Fires and incomplete trying to find Kava Cassidy on this quick screen pass, but uh, overthrew him. And it brings up fourth down and nine. And Sarah will bring in either a punting or kicking team. A great, great read there by, by the quarterback to be able to read that linebacker blitz. It brought the, the whole house in. And uh, if he gets that ball completed on the far side of the flat, there's nobody in front of him to go ahead and tackle him. There's only one person that would have been able to make a, a tackle for for, uh, for Palo Alto. And, uh, well, they are going to line up here for, for the field goal. It'll be a 50-yarder. 51 officially. So Anthony Tom's coming in. We'll see what, uh, what he could do on this cold and damp night. Kick is up, and Toms has, does not have the distance, and it's wide left. Just short and wide left. And that will give it back to the Vikings. So the Vikings will take over. Tom. 51 yard at a high school level is a uh, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty difficult thing to do, but I mean, we've seen it done before. Oh, yeah. And once again, we talk about Coach, uh, Coach Walsh doing what he needs to do to go ahead and get the win here, and well, he's trying everything he can to and, give and, it something. And that was the right call because they're going to take over at the 20. So even if he, if they punted that and went in the end zone, it was going to go to the 20. So why not try the, the field goal when you have a kicker that is capable of making a deep kick, as we saw, as he was uh, you know, pretty close to making that, just a little bit short, just a little wide left. But, again, the right call because it gives the ball to the 20. So, I mean, no harm in going for that here. So Chris will hand the ball off on first down and 10, and it'll be a pickup of a yard as Justin Gates Mouton gets uh, the carry, the twin brother of Jay Sean, who had that uh, big touch or big uh, reception in that first quarter. Justin Gates Mouton picks up about a yard. He has 454 yards rushing for the season, a long of 90. Also showing he has speed and the ability to break free. Well, Peter. Tui Pulotu on the tackle, and I think we're going to be calling his name a whole lot here tonight. You're the captain of the defensive side for these Padres. Second down and nine. Chris will look to throw. Has time, fires, and has a man wide open. Drops the ball as Malcolm Davis was wide open, and he had it momentarily, but it looked like one of those classic cases of looking to run before he corralled it. And it slipped out of his hands. It would have been a big pickup. And you see the strength of his arm. I mean, just being able to throw that on a rope exactly where he needs to be. Great communication with his receiver. Great way to be on the same page with their quarterback uh, for Davis. And uh, it's, it's one of those things that's going to take you a long ways throughout the season when you can go ahead and get that done. We have an official timeout. It looks like there's an equipment malfunction with one of the Sarah players. And so they'll get that attended to. As ready to uh, resume play. So third down and about nine. Chris will look to throw. He's under pressure. He just has to get rid of it and fires it away as Chris was drilled on the blitz. Williams was the closest receiver there, but uh, Chris was just trying to get that out of there as fast as he could. He'll punt this one away. So Sarah's defense comes up big. So it looks like it's going to be Aesop Winston back deep. And he'll stand at about the 45-yard line, his own 45. And Chris will punt this one away. He is stand down, standing at his 5. High snap, and Chris is unable to corral it cleanly. Now he just has to fall on it. And was it in the end zone or is that the 1? It's at the oh, one. it's at the one-yard line, and so Sarah catches a huge break. They're going to take over at the one-yard line. While well, we talk about the turnovers, and in this yeah. case, it it, uh, it hits Palo Alto. They, they they get a turnover not only deep in their own territory, but at the one-yard line, and uh, that's going to put Sarah in a very good position to go ahead and try to get this ball in, and I'm guessing they're probably going to give that ball to Redwood. Yeah, Chris, it's kind of hard to snap it over his head, but uh, he, that was the case, not able to go up and get it, and falls on it at the one. Almost a safety, but uh, almost might have been better off if it was a safety if you're a, a Viking fan. So Redwood is the ball carrier, and he falls forward in the left side. He's in the end zone touchdown. So Redwood goes in from a yard out, and we're a two-point conversion away from getting this one tied up. 
We'll see if they do elect to go for two or if they just uh, take the points. Why well, you talk about break, catching a break there for Sarah as they get the ball at the one yard line here and Wedwood, you know, we knew he was going to be the ball carrier to get it into the end zone from one yard out. And now that I think they're going to go here for a two point conversion. Uh, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, and I preach this all year long. You don't want to chase that point. If you fail to get this, all of a sudden now you're two points down. So we'll see. Well, they figure Redwood can get it out, um, in from one yard. And now we have whistles, and someone may have called a timeout. And it is going to be a timeout called by the Padres. They want to discuss this one, but this is my philosophy on the two-point conversions. And I've talked about this with all my broadcast partners throughout the year. Never want to chase that point, especially early on. You don't go for two until you have to go for two. That's my, my theory on it, because if you miss it now, all of a sudden you're not chasing that last one you missed, but now you're chasing another point. So you take the points when you get it, you go for two when you absolutely have to. I totally agree with that philosophy. Even 10-17 left in the second quarter oh, yeah. of play. There's plenty of football left. We've got a whole second half left. Uh, it better to be down one point than to be two, down two points because, like you said, if you're chasing two points and you try to go for another one, yeah, then, yeah, you're down, yeah. then you're down, down a field goal. So you don't, yeah, I mean, unless you absolutely have to go for two late in the game, then you go for it. But I, I'm not a believer in going for it early. And I've seen it come back to bite so many teams. But then again, it, you know, sometimes it does work where they convert it. Mean, it's just a, a big gamble that I personally wouldn't be willing to take if I was the coach. Well, Coach Pat. And well, he knows what he's doing, obviously. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> and, he, you know, he's gambled a couple times here already, and he's not afraid to go for it here. So it looks like they will go for two-point conversion here, and we'll see what kind of play they, they set up. Yeah, and talking with Coach Walsh before the game, very confident. Very confident. Obviously knows what he's doing. This team is very good. And so they're going to line up to go for it after the timeout. It's going to be a pitch out to the far side, and it's going to work in favor of Sarah as Kava Cassidy is able to run in untouched, and we're going to be tied up at 14. So all that discussion goes out the window, but a big gamble, and it pays off for the Padres. And a great, a great play there, a toss sweep to the left side. You've got plenty of space to run and try to, you know, if somebody does come up, up from under you, you can be able to break a tackle and still manage to get into the end zone in the corner. So great job, and uh, we got a tight score, 14-14. All tied up, at, as you called it, 14 apiece with 10-17 left. In the first half here on PlayOnSports.com. Play on Sports is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from all over the country. PlayOnSports.com. High school sports lives here. And so now Sarah has taken the momentum. And you think about it, you look at it and it really would be you would think Palo Alto would have the lead in this game just with their play and they've executed on those turnovers but you look at the scoreboard and we're all tied up so Thomas will kick this one away and back deep is going to be Gates Mouton and uh, Davis so Thomas getting set making the, the play call here with 10-17 left here in, in the first half Go ahead from the official. The whistle blows, and now Tom's well ready to boot this one away. Tom's kick in the air, and it will be fielded at about the three. Crossing the ten, and spinning out of a tackle momentarily. And finally, finally tripped up is Jay Sean Gates Mouton as he gets only to the 15 yard line, and so they're going to be deep in their own territory to start this drive. Well, the Sarah defense and the special teams team is they've done a great job of swarming to the tackle and making sure that that person comes down. They're able to wrap their players down and not give them any more yardage than they should. Uh, the only times they've been beat has been through the air, and that's because you have a quarterback on the other side that can throw the ball 60 yards on the money. So uh, not, 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 nothing you can do about that. So here we go. Chris will take his team up, and we'll see what uh, he has up his sleeve on this drive. And I think I have a feeling we're going to start to see him air it out a little bit more as this game progressive. Chris, under pressure, under pressure, fires incomplete as it goes through the hands of a couple different receivers there. Initially to Tolbert, and then on the reflection was Keyshawn Johnson, and we have an injured player back there. Is that, uh, let's see who that is. Can't make out who that player is at the moment as he is being attended to as an injured Viking. As he's on his back now, so can't make out uh, who the number, but the Padres came with pressure there. 
very good pressure by the Padres and uh, airing it out was uh, Chris. And, and one of the things that, that, that happens when you have a quarterback like Chris, that kind of uh, arm makes it difficult for the, for the yeah. receivers to catch the ball because the ball is coming so fast that if you don't catch it with your hands and it hits you in the pads, it's going to bounce, bounce right off. Yep. And you're not going to make the completion. So it's got to be – you've got to catch the ball with your hands. And one thing, too, with this kind of cold weather, uh, when it hits your hands, it doesn't feel very, very nice. So uh, receivers got to be ready for it. He's yeah, going to he, be – start airing it out. He throws like, you know, a uh, collegiate close to NFL player just on the lights out. And he's only a junior. So, again, those receivers. But, again, they've been playing with them here for a while, so they understand that. But that's what we saw right there as uh, they tried to catch it with the shoulder pads, bounced off from Tolbert, and then uh, Keyshawn Johnson was there as well, and he also had an opportunity. But it uh, falls incomplete. As it looks like drizzle starting to come down a little bit. Not a good uh, sign here. And it looks like the injured player who is able to walk off on his own, uh, walking off gingerly, is Spencer Drozovic, the captain, one of the captains. That's always a good sign when they can walk off the field under their own power. Yeah, he looks like he's going to be all right. He's putting weight on it, and he's walking normal speed. That's a good sign for everybody. So second and ten after that incomplete pass. 10-01 remaining. I don't know why the clock is running. It was an incomplete pass. Our receiver's got to be ready because that ball's going to be a little slippery. A little bit of moisture in the air, a little bit of moisture on the field. Well, I think the clock operator has it run. The clock is running. Uh, the clock, it was an incomplete pass. But um, Chris will snap it after the 15 seconds ran off. And Chris is under pressure. He gets rid of it. And again, incomplete, bouncing off of a player. And again, that's Tolbert. So that's back-to-back -back plays to Tolbert that were there. And Tolbert seems to be ready for the ball. But the ball, once again, coming and hitting him right on the numbers, just bouncing off his pads. you got to catch that ball with your hands in front of you and, and bring again, it in. And again, moisture coming down now, which is going to play a role for these receivers. So it's going to be third down and ten. So the Padres, they've uh, figured something out here, putting the pressure on Chris, making it tough for him to find the open receiver. I think they've hit the gaps pretty well with the linebackers and putting the pressure on Chris to make sure that he throws that ball. You can't give him enough time to sit back there and look downfield and find the open receiver because he will pick you apart. <laughs> pick you apart. So here we go, third and ten. Chris will look to throw again. He's under pressure. He is going to try to run with it for a moment. Now tucks it and throws and has his man, Gates Mouton. As Jay Sean Gates Mouton looking to run, there's flags on the field, however. As Gates Mouton, for the moment, has a huge pickup as he is brought down near the 20, but uh, there are a couple penalty markers out there, and it is. It's going to be a holding call against uh, Palo Alto. That's going to come back. And a lot of times, that's when you see those holding calls when you're on the run like that. And Chris was scrambling out. Well, Daniel Lavulu Lu 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 had pressure on Chris, and uh, he was held from his jersey a little bit when he was coming around, and he was all over it. He called a holding call right in the back, and it'll bring him back 10 yards. And, well, we have offsetting penalties. Because there's also a, a hold or penalty going against Sarah, so they're just going to replay the down. So they had defensive interference and a hold, so they'll bring it back to third and 10. So, uh, Missed opportunity there because of the hold. Yeah, I was going to call holding from up here, <laughs> but uh, the ref beat me to it. Yeah, I don't know if you were able to throw the flag as far <laughs> from all the way up here. Risk of uh, taking out a cheerleader or something like that. That was a good call by the official, though. So third and ten, as we will redo the down. 9.08 remaining in the half. Chris will throw again. He has time to throw. Going deep. And incomplete. That was just good coverage. They're asking for flags, but that was that was just good coverage there by Aesop Winston. Very good coverage. And, you know, it, it, pretty good job there by Sarah when they only rushed three guys. Uh, he rushed three guys, and he had some time to look downfield and throw it. Ball was a little thrown a uh, little, little bit long, but nonetheless, uh, a three and out here once again, and they'll get the ball back on, 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 on turnover on downs. So Chris will punt it away, and we'll see if they're able to uh, – Handle this one a little bit more smoothly as the last punt attempt uh, ended in disaster for Palo Alto. So Winston standing at about the 45. Chris, nice snap this time. This time he gets a nice kickoff. 
Winston will field it out midfield. He fumbles it, but I believe he's able to get back on it. He does. So Sarah avoids disaster there as Winston's able to fall back on it. It'll be first and ten for Sarah. And being a return man, it's very difficult because you get those end-over-end kicks that are very difficult to catch, and then you get the spiral kicks that, you know, when they go up, they go up really slow and really nice, and they look real pretty. But then when they're coming down spiraling, they're coming down really, really fast. So that's another ball that can actually get right through your hands and go right right between your hands and uh, and cause a, a, a loose ball. So you got to be real careful if you're a return man. 8.54 left as we have a handoff up the middle, pickup of close to – Five. I think it's going to be about four. And that was Redwood with the carry, and it will be about four. Second down and six. And this is the classic smash mouth football here by Sarah, just running it up the middle every single time to try to get to yardage. And uh, in their favor, it, 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 it actually benefits them because in you know, time of possession, you keep the offense of Palo Alto off the field by running the ball up the middle in small increments, five well, yards here, six yards there, you get first down, you move those chains forward, clock uh, time to comes off the clock. Well, and that's what Coach Walsh said when we were talking to him before the game, is what kind of defense you got to use the best defense is to keep the ball, keep the way, ball away from uh -huh. Palo Alto, which is ex extremely true. And it seems to be working. Second down and four. Pitch play. Breaking free is Arco. He spins out of a tackle and has enough for the first down, so a nice move there by Arco. They had that little bunch formation and a quick pitch to Arco. Picks up about seven, and that will move the chains. A lot of motion, a lot of misdirection there, causing confusion on the defensive side. You don't know who's going to get the ball, and as soon as that hole opens up, you know, you get four or five yards, and you move those chains forward. The first and ten ball is at the 37-yard line of Pally. Flags come flying out as Kazakov is going to keep it himself. He picks up about five, but you got to think this is probably going against the Padres, and the referee is yeah, saying, come on back. So Kazakov would have had five, but we'll see what the official said the violation was, and it's going to be an illegal formation penalty pushing him back. So negate that five-yard run and instead push him back five yards. Tied up at 14 apiece, 8.09 left in the first half. In this first round matchup in the Central Coast section, the winner takes on the winner of Terra Nova and Bellarmine. It was uh, playing as we speak, and we'll try to get an update for that again as the game progresses. Quick end around to Redwood, and he has Green in front of him. He is untouched. He is gone. Touchdown from 43 yards out. Eric Redwood showing his speed there. Just like that, the Padres have taken the lead. Once again, a fake handoff right there, and then to give it to uh, Redmond. It, it's gonna, it, it's fooled them every single time, and they got gotten good yards on that. And this play, it goes for a touchdown. So Redwood, untouched, scoots into the end zone. And Redwood getting his second touchdown of the evening. Redwood gives the Padres a six-point lead, and Anthony Toms will look to extend that here with the extra point. Toms' extra point is up, and the extra point is good. So the score, 21 to 14. Sarah has taken the lead over the Palo Alto Vikings here on PlayOnSports.com. So the Vikings struck early. They had the 14-6 lead. They had the football. It looked like they were going to try to march down and add to that. Just like that, the momentum has completely switched. Well, three critical turnovers has, has led to points for both teams. Two turnovers uh, led to two touchdowns for Palo Alto, and then one turnover for Palo Alto led to points for for uh, Sarah. So, once again, we, we talk about, you know, playoff time. We talk about, you know, being able to protect the ball. Turnovers will kill you at this at this stage of the, uh, of the game. This late in the season, when you're playing top competition, you know, throughout your sections, throughout your, your, your the state of California, it's going gonna, it's gonna to matter, and it's going to come to who protects the ball the best and who plays the cleanest football in order, for, in order to come out with the win. Yeah, it's still obviously a lot of time left. Still 7.50 left here in the first half. You have a feeling we're going to see a lot more uh, scoring, twists and turns as this game progresses. So Palo Alto back deep. 
Toms is getting ready to boot this one away. As Malcolm Davis and Jay Sean Gates Mouton are back deep. Kick is up, and it will be fielded at the one by Gates Mouton. He'll break out of a tackle, have some room, and will finally be tripped up at the 35-yard line. It's a good field position for the Vikings to start this drive after that 35-yard return. Let's see what Palo Alto can come out with here offensively and uh, try to answer these uh, these six points that the city said seven points that Sarah just put on the board. So you know they have the offense to do it. They're very well balanced. So maybe they'll go back to the run and try to establish a run game here a little bit. Something they haven't really done throughout the game. Sarah had doing a good job uh, containing that line of scrimmage. I have a feeling we're going to see a play action here. They need to kind of get the Padres playing a little bit more honest, but uh, that's not the case. It's going to be a pitch out to Tolbert. A flag comes flying out. And Tolbert has a big pickup, and another penalty marker comes flying out after the play. So Tolbert would have had a gain of about 12, but uh, we have an injured Padre as well. Looks like it's uh, Josh Cordova. So we have a lot of things to sort out here. We have the injured player that's going to get uh, attended to by the coaching staff, coaching staff. And we'll see what these penalty markers are. you got to figure one is holding. And then the last one came out at the end, so maybe a – Something coming off the coaching staff said something or someone sportsman like we'll see. That's gonna be a holding call. There yeah, is sportsman -like, sportsman like conduct. Like. So that's something the coach said at the end of the play would cause that penalty marker to fly out. So that's gonna be a huge loss. But not only ten, you're gonna mark off an extra fifteen because of that. And the fans here at Palo Alto are not happy with that call is our producer has uh, found an umbrella for our equipment here as the rain is starting to uh, make its way back over here as drizzle coming down. Thank you, Jared. want to give thanks to our videographer as well, Daniel Stewart, braving the rain up on top of the press box. And we are outside tonight of the press box. One of our very uh, wonderful fans brought us a yeah, I, I'll an tell umbrella. You, the people here have been very, 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 very friendly, friendly very accommodating as well. So I want to give a Special thanks out to uh, staff here at Palo Alto High School. So it's going to be first down and forever here. First and 29 with 725 left. Chris is going to throw on first and long. Again, they put pressure on it. He fires it and he's able to get the Tolbert as he was hit. Tolbert has a big pickup. And Tolbert is tripped up near the original line of scrimmage. So Chris took a hit, but he was able to find Tolbert, and we have another holding penalty. Mark it off. I did not see the penalty marker, but there is a flag there. And the Palo Alto fans, I'm sure you folks at home can hear, not very happy. Daniel Lavulu was coming in and putting the pressure on on Chris, and uh, he hit. He got a pretty good hit on him, but Chris was able to get that, that pass off, and that's something that we've seen. The receivers have been open during those locations. They just haven't been able to put it together where – it's been under center, and he will hand it off on first down. Hand off to Tolbert, makes a man miss. Nice cut move. Has a lot of green ahead of him. He may be gone. He is going to be gone. He's at the 30. 10. Touchdown. I see no penalty markers. Touchdown. Palo Alto. Wow. What a run by Tolbert. He cut it to the right side of the field. There was nothing there. Instead, he turned around and created the offensive line of pushing that block five, seven yards downfield to open that ha that gap. That you, I, I could have dri driven a semi through that gap. As soon as he cut it back to the near side of the field, he had plenty of space. There in the secondary had weakened. There was nobody going to touch him on that on the near side of the field. Wow. <laughs> that was amazing. As 82-yard run from Tolbert. That's his second score of the day. The first one came on the uh, receiving end. This time, he rushed it in. And now Fogue will come in and Try to tie this game up. Extra point is up and good. We're all knotted up. 21 apiece. And the penalty flag. 32 remaining. On the field. I think it's run into the kicker or roughing the kicker. They'll probably just tack that on on the kickoff, which means they'll probably sail this one into the end zone. And, yeah, the referee is asking uh, the bench what they want. It is going to be uh, roughing the kicker penalty, and they'll apply it on the kickoff. 
have an exciting game here as we are knotted at 21 apiece. We've seen big play after big play, and right when you think momentum is switching, we are proven wrong, and it goes right back to the other team. Well, we're going we're gonna to see plenty of scores here tonight. I mean, these two offenses are are very explosive, and they have guys that can make things happen immediately, and they're very explosive on the field. So there we see what uh, – Palo Alto can go ahead and get done on the running game. We talk about a very balanced team. Not only can they throw the ball, but they can also run the ball. Tolbert averaged 7.6 yards a carry throughout the regular season. I think uh, his average is right there. That's yeah, and he's rushed for over 1,000 yards this season as well. 12 touchdowns go on top of that. The senior captain, Matt Tolbert, uh, having himself a good game. Again, that's his second touchdown. The first one came on the screen pass. This one comes from 82 yards out on the ground. So 6.32, and Pally's going to boot this one away from the Sarah 45, and this one will probably end up going through the uprights. It won't be worth three points, however. And the Vikings, about a 55-yard field goal. Here it is. It's booted. It's oh, going to make man. it through easily. Oh, it hit the upright. <laughs> It fell out, so it wouldn't have been worth three, but it's going to go to the 20-yard line. Well, we know that if it, uh, <laughs> if it goes to special teams, folks, we have a kicker from Pally in Aesop Winston who can uh, kick the ball, probably nail one from about 65, 70 yards with that leg. It hit the, it hit the crossbow, and, and the, 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 the bar, and it hit it at the top. So 6.32 left in the first half, and the Padres will take over at the 20-yard line. They'll try to reclaim that momentum that they had just a moment ago, but it is now wearing green. Quick option play to Arco, and Arco is chased out of bounds. He'll lose a yard. Second down and 11 as the Viking defense not fooled at all on that one. Well, Arco only loses one yard. It could have been more like five yards, but doing a great job of keeping his uh, center of gravity low and keeping his shoulder pads low, bounces off one tackler and gets another uh, four yards to make it a loss of only one. So second and 11, and the momentum again, as I said, wearing green as it has turned over to the defensive side, at least after that first play. So Kazakov under center will pitch over to the far side. He'll give it to Kava Cassidy. And Cassidy is going to be bottled up for a pickup of none. It, I think he got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was it. And it brings up third and 11. Well, Spencer Draslovich with the tackle on the far side. Swarming to the tackle was the entire Palo Alto squad on the pitch. But this is something that they, that that we've seen uh, that, that should be taken into consideration, the fact that they're keeping the ball on the ground. But you're starting to see the secondary get closer and closer to the line of scrimmage there. Look for a play-action uh, fake uh, pass here and big yardage downfield. Kazakov will instead pitch again to Cassidy and Spins out of a tackle and will get only a couple. It'll be fourth down and about seven. And so the Palo Alto defense does a great job. That was actually uh, Redwood. Redmond. Who Redwood. picks up a couple. And it'll bring up fourth down and we'll call it uh, six officially. So a pickup of about five. But they're going to punt this one away and the Viking defense does its job. Well, they stayed conservative. Three uh, running plays on the ground. Well, I think they have faith on their defense, and I think they you know, they gave up that big run a minute ago, but they figure that may have been a little bit of a fluke as they had their uh, defense up high. And I don't think that was the case, but that may be what they were thinking. As the punt is fielded and crossing the mid midfield line and close to the 45 is Malcolm Davis. So the Vikings are going to have great field position. We'll see if they give it right back to Tolbert, who had that huge pickup a moment ago. Kava Maka on the tackle. They're on special teams to bring him down, but very good field position here for Palo Alto as they get it inside the territory of the Padres. This so will be first and 10 from the Padre 46. 456 left in the half. I feel like we're covering a baseball game saying the Padres. <laughs> Not very often you see a football team. I've seen a lot of high schools from all around, and this is the first time I've seen one uh, with the Padres. Ball handed off. Pickup of about four from Justin Gates, Mouton. And it'll bring up second and six. Nice smart play there by Mouton. He didn't see much room. He said, you know what, I'm going to go right through this hole right here. And just lean forward. He got a gain of about four yards. And bring
brings up second and six. Chris gets the play call from Coach Sapp, and it's scary to think that Chris is going to be back for another year. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> you look at his size, we saw him out on the field. He, he looks like a collegiate player, but he's only a high school junior. And he's going to call a timeout here as he, a little bit of confusion. So timeout on the field, second and six, 421 left in the half. We're all knotted up at 21 apiece here on PlayOnSports.com. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. And I'm Andrew Jensen alongside Valentin Escanuela, producer Jared Wright tonight, and Daniel Stewart, our videographer, braving out the elements here at Palo Alto High as we're all outside. And we're all from Southern California. <laughs> we're all a bunch of babies when it comes to uh, weather. Weather. Because <laughs> we're, I think, the only ones in the stands here with uh, beanies on. I'm looking around, and <laughs> the rest of them are used to it. So it'll be second and six as Chris uh, getting the play call. And really, I mean, he's had, showed his moments, but most of the damage has been on the ground, other than that big pass. Had uh, two Jay Sean Gates boots on earlier, and it's been a few plays because the rest of the running game has basically been contained by uh, by Sarah. The defense has done a good job plugging up those holes. So second and six, Chris will play fake. He does that beautifully. Rolls, has a man, and completes it. And heading towards the sideline after the nice pickup is. Deont Deontay Williams, and Deontay Williams is brought down at the 25, so a nice pickup of 17. Chris plays fakes that beautifully. He hides it behind his back very nicely, and I think the only one player who didn't fall for that play fake, and it was Matt Jacobs, number 88 of Sarah, who was in, in pursuit. As soon as he saw the play action fake, he started rolling to the far side to, to um, cover the receiver. Just wasn't able to get there in time to make the immediate tackle, but still made the tackle downfield. So under four to go here in the first half, 356. Chris under center, standing at the 25-yard line. We're all knotted up at 21, but Chris looking to change that. Fires over the middle again. He has Williams. Williams has room in the end zone. Touchdown. Well, Sarah brought the linebacker blitz inside, and uh, inside linebacker wasn't able to get the hit on, on him fast enough. All you got to do is give him four seconds to look downfield and find the open receiver, and he does just that, Chris, into the end zone as he throws to his receiver for a touchdown. So Deontay Williams from 25 yards out. That is Chris' second touchdown or pass here uh, this evening. And the Vikings have reclaimed the lead, 27-21 with the extra point coming here from James Fogue, the senior. Hard snap, and Sarah is saying there is some movement, and I believe they're going to win that argument, and it's going to push the Vikings back five more yards. Well, I believe kicking the field goal is uh, Aesop Winston, right? No. Yep. No, no, excuse me. You're looking at the it's, uh, yeah, it's Folk. It's Folk. So Folk was the one that uh, put it almost to the uprights from 75 yards out, so I'm sure five yards is not going to bother him. Yeah, he's been booting them through. We saw him during uh, warm-ups as Fogg is able to get this one up. And, again, the five yards, not a factor at all. As boots that one easily through. And the lead as Balloon to 28-21. 3.44 left in the first half here on PlayOnSports.com as the Vikings have the lead over the Padres. Well, the Pally, Pally uh, Vikings come back pretty strong to be able to answer back that touchdown by Sarah. And uh, two unanswered touchdowns here by Sarah. Let's see if they can get something going offensively here with 3.44 left. 3.44 remaining in the half. And, again, this has been a game of, of swings. It's like we're watching a basketball game here. Basketball is a game of runs. We're seeing that here on the football field. And I'll, I'll be curious if Sarah does not go to the pass attack here in, on this on this play, I, and one thing I noticed in the last drive on the la, on the last offensive drive was that the the secondary of uh, of Pally started coming in a little little too far in, and there was no safety on the top side. So we'll see if uh, if they go for it here. 
the Viking mascot here having to do push-ups for every point that is scored. He's going to be tired by the end of this night. As He's going to be pretty buff, too. <laughs> yeah, the student section is uh, cheering him on. He just got done with his 28th uh, push-up. I have a feeling that we're going to see a lot more <laughs> tonight. <laughs> so we'll see what Sarah could do there. 344 left in the half, and the momentum has definitely shifted to Palo Alto. So we'll see if uh, they can get something going here before the half as Arco picks it up at the 1. Arco across the 15 and is met by a host of Vikings, and he is brought down at, I believe, the 17. Wow. And I cannot believe he got up from that. That was like a Mack truck, like the train we're seeing right <laughs> run here. <laughs> and so Sarah will get it here with 339. As you said, we'll see if they can start chipping away, maybe passing it, because right now Palo Alto knows they're not going to throw, so they're bringing their whole entire defense up for a look at this. Their whole D is... There is nobody playing deep. And again, they hand the ball off on the end of the round towards the far side, a pickup of maybe a couple. Pickup of two. It's going to be second down and eight. I did not see who had that as that was on the far side. I believe that was Redwood. I didn't believe that was Redwood. And it's going to be second and eight, but a timeout is called by Sarah with 3.29 left in the half. And you see how they bring up the entire secondary up, front, up forward, and then they drop one safety back, but... They're going to have to start if, throwing. If, uh, if, if the runners of uh, Sarah breaks that first line of defense, uh, he's going to be in for a touchdown because unless the safety can go ahead and catch up to him all the way down the field, um, it's going to be tough to, to, to be able to make a tackle when you have nobody on the far side of the field to go uh, to, to try to take it, take it down. But that's a, a big if. I mean, they're having a difficult time as the entire defense is swarming at the ball carrier. But you're right. I mean, if they do get through that, they're going to have green in front of them, but they have to get through that. So I think they're calling a timeout. I mean, realizing that they're going to have to start throwing a little bit. Well, Palo Alto uh, did a good job the last time, three and out on those uh, three uh, consecutive run plays. So we'll see if they keep uh, swarming to the, to the, to the tackles and, and closing up those holes. Second and seven. Kazakov. Is going to pump fake, and now he's going to throw. Going over the middle, and almost had Kava Cassidy. And Cassidy can't hold on and give credit to Tolbert on the coverage. So there you go, trying to go to that play action fake and trying to hit this receiver down the middle. That ball was just under throwing a bit behind the receiver. If he throws that on the inside of his shoulder, he's probably going to go ahead and get a big gain of about 25, 30 yards. Kazakov. Showing that he can throw it, though, and they're going to have to do more of that. Third down, and officially they have it marked at seven. And the ball is handed off. Breaking free is Redwood, and he'll finally pick up a, a big gain there, and he'll be brought down at the 40. So pick up a close to 20 for Redwood, and that's exactly what Sarah needed to keep this tribe going. And credit that offensive line will open up the hole for Redwood to get through and get four or five yards on that first uh, attempt and then cut it back to the near side of the field and get more yardage and, you know, first down and more. But one thing that uh, I liked about that play call was that they just went to a pass play on the third and long, expecting another pass play. Hey, go ahead and keep it on the ground. Trying to get him off balance a little bit. Kazakov will pitch it over to Kava Cassidy. And Cassidy is going to be hit and brought down after he picks up a few. It'll be second down and close to eight. And we have an injured Viking on the field. And he's able to, to trying to get up. And now he'll go back down to the ground trying to make out who that is. Second and eight once they attend to uh, the injured Viking. And we'll let you know who that is as soon as we're able to find out as able to pick up his, his number here. And he's able to get help to the field. And that's going to be Jack Anderson. And he is up and walking on his own power. May have uh, just kind of tweaked an ankle or something. He's a little bit of a limp heading to the sideline. This is where Sarah's game might hinder them a little bit with 2.56 left in the first half of play. Uh, running the ball is going to go ahead and milk that clock a lot more than you wanted to, especially when you haven't gotten past the, the midfield marker. So about eight more yards to go here to get past midfield to see if they can get it done on this play. So Kazakov will hand it off on a kind of delayed draw and breaking free towards 
the Palo Alto side is Redwood. He'll have a first down, and he'll be brought down at the 47, and I believe he got out of bounds to stop the clock as well. Well, the Red, Redwood has, has this, this explosive speed where it's automatic. It almost seems like he goes from a standstill to about, you know, uh, 15 miles per hour uh, right through the line of scrimmage. First and 10 from the 48 of the Vikings. And Arco, the ball carrier here, breaks out of the initial hit, still going, and brought down after he picks up close to 15. It'll be another Padre first down. So all of a sudden, Padre showing some life. And I love that. Arco protecting that ball, keeping it close to his, uh, to his chest. As soon as he got hit, he put two hands on the ball and said, I'm not going to lose it, and went down to the ground with big yardage. 2.15 left in the half. Time not necessarily an issue now as they are at the 34. Pitch to Redwood, hops over a defender, and will try to spin out of another before he is brought down. Picks up three. It'll be second down, and we'll call it seven. Over the there on the stop. The clock will continue to run here as the ball, <laughs> Sarah running the ball to keep it on the ground. They'll only have 148 left now and ticking. Well, I said a minute ago that time not necessarily going to be an issue, but they're going to have to show some urgency, and they're not. So now time becoming a factor with 137 left. And Kazakov looking to throw, tucks it, and will fire, and interference call coming as Kava Cassidy was the intended receiver. That was a great call. That was an easy call to make. The Harper official was, right was all over it. it. Yeah, he was right on that one. And that will give it a first down to the Padres. Yeah, the referee was right there. You're not getting much of an argument here either from uh, the Palo Alto fans or sideline. Yeah, the ball had not even reached the receiver, and he got nailed to the ground. I don't know if the defender thought that he had already caught the ball um, or just didn't realize that well, the ball hadn't even reached the receiver. Not only is that going to be a big pickup of 15, it also stops the clock. All right. So 131 remaining, and all of a sudden you're inside the red zone. You're at the 18-yard line. Got a pretty good game here, 28-21, yeah. Pally with 131 left, and an opportunity for them to, for Sarah to score here as well. So Kazakov fakes the pitch, hands it off up the middle, and it's going to be a pickup of about three. He'll bring up second and seven, and that was uh, Arco, and the clock rolling, 118 left in the half. Just a great job there by the offensive line of Pally staying at home. A lot of misdirection in that in that backfield, a lot of movement, a lot of motion, and they were able to make it the tackle right down in the middle of the, of the field. A pitch to the far side to Redwood. Redwood trying to get to the side, makes a cut, still going, and will be tripped up near the goal line. Holy cow, that guy uh, is elusive. Well, he's got great vision and very very good patience, following his blocks downfield. He has explosive speed, and you saw that there. Waiting for those two blocks to get hit, and as soon as he turned that corner, he cut it back up the middle and uh, towards the middle of the field and just really got uh, five, six more yards instead of being hit right at the line of scrimmage. Be first and goal from the two. So now if you're the Padres, you're just kind of not concerned too much with the clock because obviously you don't want to give Chris any time, if at all possible. And uh, Redwood jumps into the end zone. Touchdown from two yards out. He was untouched, and we're an extra point away from being all tied up yet again as Redwood gets into the end zone again here. And like you said, we're <laughs> having a shootout here at uh, Palo Alto. And we talked about being a defensive battle defensive yeah, battle because, you know, a lot of these teams throughout the throughout the season didn't allow much. Palo Alto only allowed 19 points per game, and uh, Sarah only allowed 15. So expecting a low-scoring game, and we are 28-27 with the extra point here waiting. And they line up in that formation where they think about going for the two, but they saw they didn't see what they uh, liked, and now they'll bring it back for the extra point attempt. If you're familiar with the University of Oregon, as I mentioned earlier, they do that every time. High snap, but Tom's able to get it up and boots it through. So we're all tied up at 28 apiece with 37 seconds remaining. But I'll tell you, if anybody can get the ball down the field in uh, 37 seconds, you have the quarterback. And Chris, so all tied up at 28 after Redwood scored for the third time in this first half. It's it's unbelievable to see these two teams play and, and, and know that a lot of these players will be coming back next year. Uh, Chris is just 
phenomenal. I mean, you talk about a player that it's it's developing. He has a whole year to develop as a quarterback and and build those skills and this foot movement and everything else. And for to believe that he's going to be back here next year, <laughs> that's that's just going to be unfair. It's going to be unfair for a lot of teams that are playing within their league. And uh, I believe Palo Alto plays in the uh, the Anza League. Well, you also have Malcolm Davis, the junior, coming back if you're Palo Alto, so that's a key component. Uh, fortunately, you're lo losing Tolbert and you're losing the Mouton Twins, which is a big uh, blow. But you have some key components coming back and some guys that don't necessarily get a lot of playing time because of those seniors will be back here as well. Uh, you're also losing Deontay Williams, a, a key receiver, tight end for uh, Palo Alto. And you're losing a lot if you're Sarah as well. So, I mean, these guys don't want the season to end. They want to keep this drive going. So for a lot of these guys, it's going to be the final game of, of their career. And a little squib kick, and it's going to be fielded by Andrew Frick, and he'll just take a knee with it at the 35. So 34.6 remaining. You have a kicker that's capable of kicking it deep. You have a quarterback that's obviously it. able to uh, make something happen. I, I say you go for it. And you, got you mentioned one that, timeout left. You mentioned that Sarah, you know, is losing a lot of a lot of players, a lot of seniors on that team, a lot of senior leadership on that squad. That makes your squad even scarier when you talk about, it, especially at this level. They don't want to lose tonight. They want to go ahead and keep this season uh, uh, alive. So n they have nothing to lose to go ahead and leave it all on the field tonight and try to get a big win here tonight. So first and ten will be from the 32 is where they, it looks like they're not even going to take a try chance here as. Uh, Chris just takes a knee, which may be the smart smart thing as fans of the game and fans here you, you think you want to go for it, but uh, the smart move is to take a knee. So that will do it for the first half. We're all knotted up at 28 in a thrilling first half here at Palo Alto High School. We'll step aside for the halftime break. We'll come back for the second half in just a bit here on PlayOnSports.com.
Welcome back to PlayOnSports.com. We're here at a rainy Palo Alto High School as we have a heck of a game going on. We're all tied up at 28 apiece with Palo Alto and Sarah. I'm Andrew Jensen alongside Valentin Escanuela. And Valentin, it was a, a heck of a matchup in that first half, a game of momentum. Every time it looked like one team may try to break away a little bit, the other team came storming back. Well, three crucial uh, turnovers in the, in the first half of play, and uh, both teams capitalizing on every single one. So, But we got a tie got ball game, 28-28. Now the elements here, the weather is trying to uh, – yeah. it's probably going to become a factor here in the second half. So now you talk about protecting the ball. This is the time where you want to do that, and I guarantee you that during that halftime, the coaches were telling them, if you're going to do anything, protect the ball because the person that has the last turnovers here in the second half of play is probably going to come out with the victory. So – this is the battle of the number four and number five seeds. The winner get, gets the winner out of Terranova and Bellarmine. Bellarmine, the number one seed, Terranova, the number eight seed. And Terranova has a 21-7 20, to 7 lead at halftime, so an upset brewing. I'm not sure if these players, I'm sure they are unaware of what's going on, but the winner here will take on the winner of that. And uh, if the whole score holds up, we'll have a, a major upset, and both these teams will be lo in looking uh, pretty good shape. And as the playoffs progress. And a four and a five, I mean, you're talking about two teams that are pretty well balanced on, uh, uh, on both sides. And you, you talk about, you know, the passing game for for Palo Alto. Passing game's outstanding, but they haven't really used it here all, all that often. That first half of play, they, they, they really did the damage on the ground. So, you know, the, you, you think about how scary this team can be if they can put one and one together and not only use the air attack, but also the ground attack to uh, go ahead and get those points on the board. And Sarah's making it awfully tough on Chris. They're putting a lot of pressure on him, so he doesn't have a whole lot of time to sit back and kind of pick the defense apart. So they're going to the running game, which is working. Tolbert's having himself a monster game. And then on the other end, Sarah, Redwood uh, right now is having a career game. He had three touchdowns in that first half and well over 100 yards. Don't have his exact total, but it has to be well over 100. And looking to add more here as we're all tied up at 28. So after a half a play, we're right back where we started all tied up. Well, I think Redwood's going to be a factor here in the second half of play too, especially with the elements starting to change and the ball getting wet and not being able to throw the ball that much uh, with, you know, with, with the weather the, the way it is. But for the most part, uh, I think if uh, Sarah can go ahead and establish that ground game early, uh, they, they will be, they'll do a great job here in the second half to go ahead and try to finish off this game. So we are moments away from starting the second half. Both teams just finishing up their final warm-ups coming out of the locker room. All tied up at 28. Again, it's been a, a game of runs. And the winner will take on the winner of Bellerman and Terranova. And that game right now, Terranova up by two scores, 21-7 at the half. Did you just see that? Keller, Chris, just warming up. Just, just casually, casually throwing just it 50 casually yards. throwing it 55 yards. Yeah, it looked like uh, he was just a toss in the park. <laughs> Amazing. That's, yeah, only uh, a junior. And has a, a good coach, a quarterback coach, ex-NFL uh, quarterback Steve Bono, the head of the uh, quarterback coach here for. Yeah, his dad, uh, quarterback uh, coach for the 49ers. So, I mean, a lot of uh, quarterback blood <laughs> running through uh, the system here at Palo Alto High School. Steve Bono, obviously a great uh, NFL career head coach or the quarterback coach for the 49ers is your dad. So, obviously, you uh, picked up a thing or two having that around you. Well, I have a great showing here by Palo Alto fans coming out to support their, their home team. And uh, I don't see Jeremy Lin in the in the uh, Yeah, I think he has a game tonight. I, was, I wasn't aware that he was uh, an alum here of, of Palo, Palo Alto. Alto. Was not aware of that. And, uh, you know, I knew he went to Harvard, and I just was never aware that he came from out here. And Hello, uh, Learn something new from the fans here. At, and I think you knew that as well, but it's, uh, but it slipped your memory a little bit. Yeah, I actually covered uh, Jeremy Lin uh, in, the, in the state championship when he played, and uh, I remember thinking to myself, like this this kid is this kid is pretty good. Wanting to play for Stanford, but no one gave him an offer. Ended up going to Harvard, which uh, <laughs> I guess you can't argue with that. <laughs> and now you're playing for the NBA, so you have a degree from Harvard and you have uh, an NBA uh, career as. Opening kickoff here in the second half. Sales out of the end zone, and Sarah will take over at their own 20. A great start there for Palo Alto, putting that ball in the end zone and forcing them to take their ball and 80 yards in order for them to get a score here. You don't want to give them as much uh, ground. And very dangerous uh, return meant for, for Sarah. Yeah, you got the, the Redwood out there. You're, you're in trouble if he gets the ball in open space. So here we go, start the second half. 
It is going to be a quarterback keeper on the fake handoff. Kazakov is able to pick up about five, so a good start. It'll be second down and five for the Padres after that uh, quarterback keeper. And you're seeing the Palo Alto defense being very aggressive trying to protect that run, trying to contain that line of scrimmage, but that's one thing that can really hurt you if uh, with the play-action fake. They're actually giving them a little bit more there. It's going to be a gain of six, so it uh, looks like a little favorable spot. Second and four, quick pitch. And breaking free is Redwood, and he is tripped up near midfield. It looked like he had the ability to break another one, but uh, just tripped up, but a big gain nonetheless for Sarah. And we talked about that in the first half. You got the linebacker blitz. They all come in. They bring the house in, and if he gets to that first line of defense, he's going to get a huge a huge uh, gain. Luckily for uh, Palo Alto, Jay Sean Gates Mouton, he makes a tackle again. He saved a, a score in that first half of play as well. One of the guys that might be able to keep up with the speed of Redwood is uh, Kate Smuton, one of the quicker guys on this roster. So Kazakov will hand the ball off and pick up of a few, and Redwood's still going before he's finally corralled after he picks up about 12. It looked like he was only going to get two or three, but somehow got out of it. Well, the, tack the, 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 the person tackling the uh, Redwood was trying to strip the ball out of his hands, and... Uh, Red was like, you know what, I'm going to go and hold on to it, spin around, and just keep my legs moving forward. Red was very, very uh, uh, aware of the fact that the whistle hadn't blown. The senior running back, Redwood, has not wanted his high school career to come to an end today, and he is uh, doing everything in his power to keep this going. First and 10 from the 38 yard line. Fake handoff, and it's going to be a, a fullback trap play, and it's going to be a pickup of a few to Malapiai as he picks up. Uh, Picks up about six. And I like that play call. A little bit of misdirection there, and they give it off on the inside handoff. And a great gain there on that first down play. Second down and four. As Kazakov will try to pick up the first down and handoff up the middle. And met after a pickup of a few. And that was uh, Redwood again. That's going to be uh, a pickup of a couple. So third down and short at the 30-yard line. Third down and we'll call it uh, a long two. Great job of the defensive line blocking that hole and plugging it up. It opened up for just a second, and right when he was going to go through it, they, they plugged it up and got the big tackle and held him short of the first down. you got to figure this is going to be four down territory. Third down and two. A quick pitch out to the near side. Redwood trying to get to the corner and is tripped up after he picks up the first. So Redwood continues his uh, great, great pickup. And once again, Redwood showing his patience as a runner. Has great vision, follows his blocks. He doesn't have to use his full speed to go ahead and get big yardage. He needed three yards. He got three and a half and a first down. 9.26 left here, just underway here in the second half. This is the opening possession in the second half, and Sarah has marched it down to the Pally 26-yard line. Hand off up the middle, pick up of a couple, but uh, Palo Alto all over that. And that was, looks like Kevin McGee with his uh, first carry of the game, picks up a couple second down and two, or second and eight. Nice job by Spencer Drazovich. Staying at home and making that tackle. So we have second and eight from the Viking 24-yard line. As they line up again in this bunch formation. Pitch to the near side. And nowhere to go is Redwood. He is going to be stopped in his tracks. He'll pick up maybe a yard depending on the spot there. It brings up third down and long. Lighting up in the wing back formation goes uh, Sarah. The handoff and nowhere for him to go. So that's been something that they've been doing well. Palo Alto has been stopping those uh, toss sweeps and those uh, end arounds, receiver end arounds, wing, wing end arounds pretty nicely. So third and eight. As the ball is still marked at the 24. Kazakov hands the ball off, but it's going to be a loss of about three. 
as the Viking defense not fooled at all with that misdirection. And that was Eric Arco. Anderson. Eric Anderson on the tackle there, getting great penetration and bringing him down. So a loss of one. So it's going to be fourth, fourth and nine. Actually, I think that's wrong. I think it was a loss of a couple more. It's fourth and 11 is where it will be. So it's going to be, if they kick the field goal from here, it would be about a 45-yard attempt. Or you go for it. Well, we know he has the leg. He's going for it. He's going for the field goal. It's Anthony Toms. So Anthony Toms, has, he has a leg. He showed it on the last uh, attempt from 51. So this one will be about 45. Snap is good. Kick is up. It has the distance. It is good. A 45-yard field goal. Wow. In this wet conditions as well. So give... Tom's all the credit in the world on that one. I was right down the middle, just got over. And I gotta tell you, if it comes down to special teams and you know making things happen on the field goal side of things, both of these two teams have guys that can go ahead and get it done. So 45-yard field goal at the high school level—that's that's pretty gutsy. And the fact that it went through—that's pretty impressive. So Sarah reclaims the lead as they have a 31 to 28 advantage with 7-11 left here in the third quarter. This game keeps going back and forth in the seesaw affair. And you see Sarah's ability to move with the ball, the chains downfield, and get themselves in a position where they know they can score, whether it's seven, whether it's six, or whether it's three points. They are getting it done here tonight. Well, it looks like we have both of the uh, Gates Mouton brothers back deep. Both Justin and Jay Sean are back deep to return the kick. Toms will kick this one off, and it's going to be fielded at the two by Jay Sean. Jay Sean is corralled and bottled up as he brings it out past the 20 and to about the 23. So that is where the Vikings will start their first drive in the second half as they trail by three, 31-28 with 7.05 left, and we'll get our first look of Keller Christ in the second half. have stopped for the time being. I got I had my little rain poncho on, man. Yeah, as soon as you put it on, <laughs> the rain stopped. Your little homemade uh, poncho out of a trash bag. <laughs> you got to do what works. I forgot how a trash bag can actually keep you warm. The first down and 10, and they're going to hand the ball off, and that's going to be Tolbert, who has solid yards on first down as he has chased out of bounds. He'll pick up about four, so it brings up third down and six. Well, Tolbert got the, did a lot of the damage in that first half of play for Palo Alto on the ground. Yeah, Tolbert had uh, that big run of 82 yards. He also had a touchdown uh, reception off that screen pass. He's been in the end zone twice. This is Palo, Palo Alto's way of like trying to establish the run to be able to work that pass game. So a pickup of, we'll call it three, second and seven after Chased out of bounds. Quick slant pattern is complete to Malcolm Davis, and Davis has enough for the first down. Pick up about 10. That was just a great route ran there by the receiver. A quick slant pattern, and Chris, once again, his accuracy is just right on the money. So 6.49 left as this second quarter, third quarter has uh, really moved right along. 31-28, Sarah has the lead. Ball is handed off, and that is going to be a big loss from Tolbert as Tolbert's, or they're going to say his four progress was stopped after a loss of loss of uh, two. So it looked like it uh, was going to be a little bit worse than it was. And the Sarah defense just doing a great job containing that line of scrimmage. That middle, uh, that middle part of the, uh, the A-gap, They've been trying to run through there every single time over right guard, and it just has not worked. Second down and 11 for Christ. And we have movement. Sarah jumped off. They're pointing, uh, saying that they were drawn off, but I believe that's just going to be an outside penalty as I saw Daniel Labulo jump across. They're going to talk about this. I didn't see any movement from Palo Alto. And Apparently the referees did not either, as they're calling it against Sarah. Yeah, Lewuto just jumped over there with no movement. 
which was on infraction. Five by, five by yards, and that's big. Shortens up the second down. It would have been second and eleven. Now it's second down and six. A lot more manageable and a lot more. Uh, you can run it or pass it. Really, in the situation, kind of gets your defense a little bit more off balance. So a handoff on the fake bootleg. Handed off, and Chris faked uh, the run, but it's only going to be a pick of it. It looks like just back to the line of scrimmage. And that is it from uh, Tolbert. So third down and five. We're starting to get a little bit of some restless fans here yelling past the ball. Which while those kind of agree. <laughs> <laughs> while those runs up the middle have, have not really worked for Palo Alto, they really uh, struggled to get the ball past uh, you know, two or three yard gains. So third down. And a long four, Chris will play fake, and he is going to throw this time under pressure. He took a hit, and he just showed that one out of bounds, but Chris took a hit. He just got rid of that one and heaved it out of bounds. He's actually lucky that wasn't a grounding penalty because I don't think I saw anybody in the area out there. Well, that was big number 99 for Sarah, and I actually don't have him on my roster. But he came in and just laid the wood on Chris. So Winston will come back and return the punt here after their defense did a great job. And Winston will get it back at about the 25. That's probably why they're not passing. That pressure is really causing problems. High kick. And Winston's just going to let it bounce. And it will go out of bounds at the 26-yard line. And that is where the Padres will get the ball back on top. 31-28 with 4.57 left in the third. Yeah, I, I, I see why they're not really passing, because every time they drop back to throw, Chris is running for his life. Well, Chris has had a couple opportunities to throw downfield. He's had about four or five seconds to look downfield and then throw, and then when he gets that much time, he usually completes it. But This time it's going to be a quarterback keeper as Kazakoff will just keep it himself. He'll pick up maybe a yard, second down and nine. 4.45 left. So we saw a lot more scoring in that first half as we have seen thus far in the second half. Only a field goal. A 45-yarder from Toms. The winds are starting to pick up a little bit now. Starting to cool off, cool down a little bit. It wasn't uh, too cold a little bit ago, but it seems like it's dropped in just the past few minutes. Arco with the pitch. And Arco breaks free momentarily before he is tracked down and He'll pick up about six, so it brings up third and close to three. Nice fly sweep call there to the right side of the field. Gain of six, and it'll bring a short third down, a manageable third down here for Sarah. Third down to three. The ball is at their own 34-yard line. This is a big third down in this game, trying to keep the momentum going. Hand off to Redwood. He has room, trying to get to the corner. It makes a man miss momentarily, but uh, tripped up at the Palo Alto 41. So Redwood just tripped up by Jayshon uh, gates Mouton. If it wasn't for him, he was uh, heading to the end zone. Once again, Mouton saving an another touchdown. And we talk about when they bring the house, they bring everybody in. They know they're going to run. The entire house comes in, and... You know, you get a little bit of room, you break one tackle, two tackles, and you're on your way for big yardage. So under three and a half here in the third, Kazakov will hand off, pick up of a couple second down and eight, and I believe that was Cassidy. And it'll be second and eight as we have 3.15 left in the third. So again, this quarter running down quickly. The Padres trying to get into the end zone and have a, a two-score lead. And so far, we're, we're, we're playing Sarah football here because, you know, their, their, their main goal was to go ahead and keep that offense of Palo Alto off the field. And, you know, running the ball in small increments like this is, is continuing to make that uh, clock tick. Pitch. And a flag comes flying out. And that was Cassidy again that uh, he only picked up a couple, but he believed this is going to come back. So it would have been third down and about six, but we'll see if they accept it or 
No, I think they called this on. They called this on the Vikings. Defense a holding on a run play. You don't see that uh, a whole lot. I think it was hands to the face. Yeah, there you're right. They're legal hands. I think it was hands to the yeah. face. Yeah. And that's going to be an automatic first down, and that's really to the dismay of the Palo Alto fans here. Not happy at all with that call. That hurts. That hurt, that hurts a lot. A lot of the fans wanted the officials to uh, let them play, but when you got hands to the face and helmets going up, that's how you get injuries. So first and 10 from the 39 of the Vikings and a fullback dive right up the middle. Hopping over defenders is Filamila Pea who hops in and gets into the end zone from 39 yards out. His first carry of the game goes for a touchdown. Well, he hurdled the defenders. Woo! The opposite lineman got the block, and uh, he had to jump over the entire offensive and defensive line before he got into the end zone. And Toms will come in now, and they're going to do their little uh, formation here to see if they go for two, but you figure they're probably just going to boot this one through for the extra point. It would be the wise decision, and they head back to the line for that. No protection in that secondary for Palo Alto. They're they're going all or nothing here on those on those run calls, and uh, that's been a couple plays where they got burned for big yardage. In this case, they got burned for a touchdown. It's Tom's for the extra point. Kick is up, and the extra point is up and through. So a 10-point advantage now for Sarah, 38-28, 2:27 left in the third here at Palo Alto High. If you want to watch more of your school's great matchups, like the game you're enjoying here tonight, tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. And what a game. Sarah has really taken the momentum away as they have the 10-0 lead here in the second half to give them that 10-point advantage. So obviously a whole lot of time left. We still have 2.27 left here in the third, but Palo Alto has to kind of wake up a little bit here in the second half. Well, I think they start establishing that run here in this, this next drive. They get a couple of good run plays. Uh, I think that Chris can really take advantage of that pass play. He, we know he can throw the ball. We know he's accurate. It's just getting those routes to work out for them down the middle or down the sideline. So Tom's ready to boot this one away. Toms will kick this off, and it's going to sail to to uh, Jay Sean Gates Mouton. Makes an initial defender miss. It has a little bit of room and is brought down. So a nice return, but uh, will be brought down at about the 28-yard line. So a good uh, return to 28 yards for Gates Mouton, and we'll let his uh, stellar quarterback, Keller Christ, go back to work. I think right now you give Chris a couple opportunities to throw the ball downfield and uh, try to get comfortable. The only thing that he needs is just a little bit of protection. Yeah, he just needs a couple of seconds to look downfield and find that open receiver. He'll get that ball to him. But Sarah is just coming with all-out blitzes on every time, not allowing him. As a handoff up the middle there, and no room whatsoever for Tolbert. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. And you got to credit that front line of the Sarah – squad they're they're doing a great job just plugging up those holes down the middle there's no way that Palo Alto will be able to run that ball against these guys they, they got that down to a science now they had to, they did it in the first half of play they're doing it here in the second half and uh, it, you're gonna have to get a little bit more creative and try to run the ball up the middle against these guys so minute 45 remaining left in the third second down and they gave him a half a yard on that last carry so second and we'll just call it nine Chris will look to throw. He is under pressure, trying to set up the screen and incomplete, trying to find Mouton. And Sarah's defense was reading that, but it's uh, big nope. number 99 once again, putting the pressure on Chris. I don't know who this 99 is. Well, we'll call him 99, <laughs> but mystery 99 man. for Sarah, mystery man. He's uh, he's getting the job done. He's pressured Chris a couple times now here in the game, and he's not allowing him to look downfield and find those open receivers. And you start to see how much 
uh, respect they have for Chris. The two safeties playing way back, saying, you know what, you're not going to get past us. We're going to make sure we make a tackle if you do make a completion. Now, this play really can tell a lot about this ball game. Third down and nine. If they don't convert here, they're going to have to punt this away, and then Sarah will have good field position, and they'll be able to eat up more time. Look at the safeties. They're way back. So the defense has made some adjustments. Chris is looking to throw, but he's under pressure. Setting up the screen. There's some room. Mouton makes a man miss and is going to be brought down near the marker. I think he has it. It's going to depend on the spot. They may have to measure here, but that's going to be pass. close. It's going to be close, depending on the spot. So yeah, they're going to bring out the chain. No, they're going to give it to him first down. So a big play there to Mouton to keep the chains going. Great job there checking down to Mouton. He was being pressured on the blitz, and he checked down to Mouton on the far side of the flat, and he had a couple of... Uh, uh, so he has the space to go ahead and get the ball upfield and get the first down. But I think if you're Sarah, you'll live with that. Yeah. Just saying you know, they're not going to get that every time. And, yeah, they may burn us a couple times for, you know, 10 yards or so. But they're, he's not going to beat us for a big gain down the field. If they continue to do that, we have whistles. And this is most likely going against the Vikings. It's going to be a false start. And it's going to push them back five yards. And it'll be second and 15. So they'll move back after picking up the first. clock will roll again once they get resumed, so that'll eat up a little bit of time. 105 left here in the third. Down by 10, 38-28 our score. Sarah on top. They have held Pally scoreless here in the second half. Plenty of time left. Plenty, plenty of football left here to play still, so Pally's still in this one. Oh, definitely with the quarterback you have and the weapons you have, but uh, Sarah has made some adjustments making it tough. They're set up a draw play, beautiful play call, and breaking out of a tackle, and a pickup of about 11. And that was Andrew Frick who uh, got the carry there. Well, he fooled me. <laughs> he had me fooled on that play because I was looking for the pass to the near side to the flat. Beautiful play call. And uh, that was big yardage there for Palo Alto as they make a lot of that yardage they lost back. It shortens up that second down. And that they may get another playoff here before the end of the third down to 15 seconds now. And it's second down and short, second and about three, so a pickup of 12 on that run. Chris play fake. He's under pressure. He takes a hit and is leveled. Unbelievable penetration there coming off the right side for Sarah via Mullet Peai. Chris didn't have a chance. That was backside pressure there by Sarah coming in and making that hit. And that will be the end of the third, and they lose pretty much all that yards they just got on that big run. So at the end of three, Sarah on top, 38-28 here on PlayOnSports.com. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to links to great highlights. Follow us on Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube and a, at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. I'm Andrew Jensen alongside Valentin Escanuela. And I want to thank our producer, Jared Wright, tonight and our videographer, Dan Stewart, as we're all out braving the elements here on a soggy evening in Palo Alto. Right next door to Stanford University. A lot of tradition, a lot of history here in the athletic department. And again, we want to give a, a thanks to all the people in the athletic department that uh, helped us out and was gracious enough to uh, kind of make this happen. Nice fan suit, talking with some of the fans at halftime. And very Everybody very friendly. Very, very nice. Welcoming. They got us an umbrella. Saving our equipment. Otherwise, who knows if we'd be actually on the air right now. So that uh, umbrella coming in huge. So a big third down to start the fourth quarter. Third and 11 after that sack. A little bit more protection here for Chris. He'll need it to get that ball downfield. Third and 11. Chris has time momentarily, but a pocket breaks down. Under pressure, fires deep. Ball is up, knocked away, and is it intercepted? No, no incomplete. incomplete. 
Malcolm Davis was the intended receiver, but it was tipped in the air, and a Sarah defender had a chance at it, but it falls to the ground, and that will bring in the punting unit. And that was a great play call. Chris just needed a little bit more time in that pocket to look downfield. He had a wide open receiver in the middle of the field. Great play call, motion to the right side, move the safety over a little bit to the right, and he had to pick up that route. But unfortunately, he had to roll out and uh, threw that into traffic. So 11.50 left in regulation as Chris will punt this one away, almost blocked. And it'll go back deep, and Aesop Winston will just let it come to a stop at the third yard line, and that is where Sarah will take over at their own 30 with the 10-point advantage, and they're just going to look to eat some time off here. And I like what Aesop Winston did. As soon as the ball landed and uh, took the first hop, he said, I'm not going anywhere near this ball. And he retreated back about 10 yards. So heads up play there to not go ahead and, you know, accidentally get hit by the ball. And next thing you know, it's a live ball. And Palo Alto will recover and deep in their own territory. We were talking about players returning and leaving as far as being the senior. Aesop Winston, the return man, only a junior. He'll be back next year. And Arco gets the carry. He has Green in front of him. And he's gone. Arco is gone from 70 yards. That's, that's the same play. They burned them on a couple times already here tonight. There's not, you don't have a lot of secondary protection with Palo Alto bringing the entire house in and trying to make those tackles on the inside of the, of the running game. And as soon as you get that one hole, you, you're going gonna, gonna to have plenty of daylight to go ahead and run forward. So Arco takes it out from 70 yards to extend the lead up to 16. So this extra point is big. If they convert this extra point, it's a three-possession game. That was a well-developed play there by Sarah. I mean, I saw that the entire way. As soon as he got the pitch on the handoff on the near side of the field, and he got those two blocks up front, it, it, was, it was just he was gone. There was not, they were not going to catch him. Tom's extra point is up and good. 17-point advantage. For Sarah as they have shut out Palo Alto thus far in the second half. 45-28, Sarah on top. So what does Palo Alto have to do here? I mean, obviously you're down by three scores. Do you have a, basically a full quarter left here? 11-28, but you can't mess around at this point. I think well, I think you got to abandon that. I think you got to abandon the ground game by now. I mean, 11-28 left here in the fourth quarter of play. you got to start you got to start throwing the ball downfield, but you need to be able to protect your, your quarterback, Chris. Well, and, uh, I know, and what makes it more difficult being down three scores is that you're playing against a running team that knows how to eat time off the clock. I mean, I think if now if you're Palo Alto, I think you, you, you start possibly going from the gun, maybe shotgun yeah. position, try to get a little bit more time to be able to look downfield, hit a couple slant routes. Uh, you know, Chris can get the ball to his, to his target. He just needs enough time to be able to throw it, and right now, Sarah has done a phenomenal job here tonight, just pressuring Chris all night long, and he hasn't had time to look downfield and find that open receiver. Um, he's had twice, um, had about four or five seconds to look downfield and throw, and what, he, what he's done, he's gone th thrown up, I think he threw a pass for up 65 yards on one play, and he threw in the bone for, for 30 yards. So we know he can get the job done. It's just a matter of having that time to, you know, find those open receivers, and it's been tough. It's been a tough night for him tonight. So the Gates Mouton brothers are back deep. Sarah's just going to kind of pooch kick it down there. And it'll be fielded by Keyshawn Johnson. He'll just fall to the ground. And smart move by Sarah, not allowing a big kick return. Smart play there by yeah, the return man just uh, fall on that, uh, falling on that ball. So it's going to be first and 10, 11-26 left in the fourth. And now you got Chris coming out. And again, you're going to have to going to have to hurry. And that's putting it uh, lightly. But you do have a quarterback that's one of the better quarterbacks the entire West Coast, especially for his his age, only a junior. So they have the talent to make it happen. Trying to look like it was going to be a halfback pass as uh, Tolbert gets the pitch. It looked like he was trying to throw that, but uh, he got stopped for a loss. Yeah, a little bit of hesitation there. Those kind of plays, you need to like be be on it. I mean, if you're going to throw the ball, you better throw the ball. You're going to get swarmed on. You hesitate. You're done and they lose two on that second and 12 and the clock rolling and they're not uh, going to a no huddle they're taking their time in the huddle there it just takes one play it takes one play to get that momentum back on your side so Palo Alto needs a big play here offensively 
Yeah, one play, if they can get a, a score quick, I mean, they'll be down 10 with about 10 minutes to go, and obviously that's plenty of time, but they have to get that big play, which they've struggled to do here in the second half. Christ with the rollout. Fires on the run, and incomplete, trying to find Tolbert. And it brings up third down and 12. Well, somehow he, he managed to notice that there was a little bit of pressure on the right side, and a backside pressure there, and he rolled out to the right side, which is the right side to roll to on this play, but just overthrew his intended receiver. So third and 12 coming up for Palo Alto. The clock stopped with the incomplete pass. 10.34 left, 45-28. If you're just tuning in, this game was tied at 28 apiece at halftime, and here we are now in the fourth quarter with Sarah up by 17. Train coming through here, set up in the middle of town here in Palo Alto. You hear that honking in the background. Christ with the play fake. He is chased from behind and brought down. And I believe that's the same guy we've been calling all night. I got to tell you, it, uh, it, it's Fia Male Pei. He had that touchdown a moment ago, and now he has a sack that's going to force a punt. Fourth and 15, and not only does it bring up fourth down, it brings up any, it erases any thought of going for it because it's really kind of in that unmakeable territory. Yeah, Fia Mela Pei has been really, really effective here, especially on that backside pressure. He's been able to get penetration and uh, put pressure on, on Chris. Chris, a high kick. If you're Winston, you'll just let that go. He does, and it's going to come to a stop at the 36-yard line, and that is where Sarah will take over with a 17-point lead with 9.40 remaining. Now, if you're Palo Alto defense, you need to stop, obviously. You, you need a three and out here. You need a quick three and out and get the ball back. And, and the, the way the way that Acera has been running the ball and the way they've been eating up the, the, the clock, it's it's going to be tough. You know, they know they're, they're very methodical. They, they get the three yards here. They get the four yards there. They get the five yards here. And then that's the first down and move the chains. Let's go ahead and go ahead and you settle down. Let's go ahead and get three yards here, four yards there. And then they break one for, for a touchdown. So they know how to take the time off the clock. First and ten. Hand off up the middle. A big pickup of about ten yards. It should be a first down. I believe that yeah, was Redwood again. Who is, I wish I had his exact total here of yards, but uh, he has three touchdowns and reaching the 200-yard mark. Yeah, it's going to be a first and ten after the ten-yard pickup. So they'll stop the chain or stop the clock momentarily to move the chains. He's above his average, 141 yards per game. Rushing yards per game, that's pretty good. Yeah, we still have nine minutes left here, and you, you figure you're going to see a lot more Redwood as uh, this game approaches uh, crunch time. Going to their wing formation. Just eating up all the time they can. And again, Redwood will get the pitch, and he'll go towards the sideline. He just needs to stay in bounds, and I don't know if he will. Can he stay in bounds? Don't have a signal yet. He stayed in bounds all right. Yep. So he picks up a couple second and eight. The clock rolling. 8.56 left. So they got two yards there. And they're going to run another play where they're going to get another three yards. They're going to keep that another clock rolling. off the clock. So you figure every snap takes at least you know, 35 seconds. And right now they're at 8.39 left in the game. Second and eight. That's going to be Arco, who had that big touchdown carry a minute ago, picks up two more. So third down and six. So third down and five. Third down and six to go here for we've got a long five and a half right at midfield. Ball at the 50-yard line, on, literally. And you think, what kind of play call do you call here if you're uh, – You run. If you're – at this point, you don't need any more points. You just The clock is what you're trying to kill at this point. So you just keep running it. They're going to go. Your, and let your defense do what they've been doing. They're going to go for their fly sweep. There it goes. And Redwood gets the pitch, breaks out of a tackle, and he is brought down near the marker, but he'll be short. So it's going to bring up fourth down and about two. So great job there by Palo Alto stopping that fly sweep, especially with uh, Redwood as a wean back on that play. Yeah, and if you're you're Sarah here, you punt this one away. I mean, I don't think there's any question about going for it here. You punt this one away, you get them, you push them back, and that is going to be the case here. 
a little late for the uh, punt team to come on, but you don't mess around at this point. You just pin them deep and let your defense do what they've been doing. So Toms will punt this one away as we are approaching seven minutes to go. And flags come flying out. It may be a delay of game. They may have taken too much time. It is a delay a game. Delay a game, so we'll push them back five yards. Fourth and eight, 707 left. And we'll punt this one away. Palo Alto will get the ball back. Still, still time is obviously going to be tough, but uh, definitely time remaining. We'll put this one away, and it will be fielded, or the roll out of bounds at the eight-yard line as Malcolm Davis just watches that roll out. And at the eight, and so Palo Alto is going to have to go 92 yards to get into the end zone. 6.58 left. They better do it quick. Get a quick score here. And what makes it really tough is that you really know they're going to be passing the situation. And so Sarah can really blitz all they want at this point and, and cause havoc on the defensive side, knowing what's coming. Either that or are you going to a prevent defense or uh, cover two? Yeah. Cover I mean, four? I can see why you would do that because you don't want to give up a big play and, and let them get back into it. But at the same time, what they've been doing. There you go. Cover two right there. Two stages over the top. Chris will have time. Fires over the middle and has it complete. And that was a pickup of, of uh, Deontay Williams, who picks up about seven on the play. So it brings up second and three. The clock rolling, 6.43. So they're going to a cover, cover uh, that title of defense here. Not too much pressure. Has plenty of Chris. Trying to find his uh, receiver there, and uh, Malcolm Davis was the intended receiver, but overthrows him as Davis was bumped at the line and kind of messed up the rhythm of that play. Third down and short here. Third down and about three to go. You need a first down. Third and three. I think you're approaching the time where it's going to be four down territory. I think at this point, even if they don't pick up this third and three, you have. Two downs to get a first down. Running out of time. Chris will throw. Has time. Going deep and incomplete. There's the penalty marker. And that's going against uh, Jay Sean Gates. Mouton was the intended receiver, but probably going to get a, an interference penalty here. That's a good call. Illegal contact downfield against the defensive back. They're talking talking it over or pass interference yes Sarah will be mm -hmm. charged with that interference call so give them a first down and 15 more yards and the clock will be stopped 629 remaining so the ball will be marked at the 31 chains move forward and the stop clock with that penalty First and ten from the 31. Chris under center. We'll see if uh, the Sarah Padres start to put on more pressure. They, uh, they're going to run it, try to get him off guard. Tolbert, the ball carrier, the ball comes loose. Well, ball was fumbled. No, they're saying he was down on contact. And I referee, uh, I believe that was the right call, saying that he was down. Down on contact. So the clock will move, and it was only a pickup of about a yard from Mouton, or excuse me, from, uh, from Tolbert. We're at the six-minute mark now. Coach Walsh is fired up on the sideline over there. Chris will look to throw pumps. Now he's going to run. And he'll be tripped up shy of the first down, I believe. They might have given him the first down. Depends on the spot. They're going to stop the clock. Pretty close. For him to figure out if he has No, they're going to say he's short. Oh, first down. No, Move him up. Okay. First down. So he never Move gave him the first up. down signal. So 
first and ten, the clock will stop for them to move the chains. 5.48 left. Crist under pressure, fires incomplete. That's great coverage there. Trying to find Davis, but the clock will stop while they, uh, with the incomplete pass. Great coverage by Cordova. Staying with the receiver, step for step, and then getting his hands all up in his grill. So 5.40 left. If you want to stay tuned, we're going to have our player of the game here, and we'll try to have a live interview with that player as well. And we'll have a discuss on who that's going to be here in a little bit. Second and ten, they'll try the end round. Jay Sean Gates moots on, and he lost the football, trying to make something happen there, and we'll see who got it. That's a fumble. That one was a fumble, so they're going to go ahead and sort this out, see who has the ball. And it looks like Palo Alto was able to fall back on top of it, but only a pickup of a yard. So third and nine. Well, we were expecting some points to be scored tonight, and we got a 45-28 Sarah lead. So third down and nine, and the clock will start rolling again. Chris under pressure, as he has been all night, and this time he goes down for a big loss. And it's been everyone, everyone in that. On that squad, but I believe coming in on the pressure was Daniel Laval, uh, Lavalu of uh, Sarah, who came in on the initial pressure for uh, the quarterback, and then a flag on the sideline. He's going to go against the coaching staff. Sideline infraction, probably. So it's going to be fourth down, and once they get this, it may have been a warning, sideline warning. Five oh three left, a seventeen point lead for Sarah. And really this is the ball game here if they don't convert. Timeout now. Confusion on the field for the defensive side. And there comes the coach. It's a timeout called by Sarah. And so they'll Palo Alto will get a chance to talk this over. It'll be fourth and twenty once play resumes. I mean at this point, I think you just line up with the shotgun and let your guys go deep and just let it fly. It's been tough for him because Chris, he has the ability, but he just has no time. He's he has not had any protection from his uh, front line. And, you know, it's really tough when you got guys on the other side, on the defensive side that, you know, we talked about the defense being, being uh, stifling. And tonight, I think Sarah has really shown why they've only allowed 15 points per game the entire season. Um, they, put, they put up two goose eggs where they've held teams to zero points. So when you got guys that are coming out the line, like Lavulo La and Cordoba, and, you know, uh, we've seen um, Malepe Ai, who's, who's been coming off the, you know, the linebacking spot, outside linebacker spot, and just really making havoc, wreaking havoc in, 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 that, in that backfield. So it's tough when you got these guys that are, you know, getting good penetration and pressuring you to roll out the pocket and not being able to look downfield for your receiver. So this is it right here. Fourth and 25 minutes to go. Chris will be under center, and he will be under pressure. He fires and has Mouton, but he's going to be about a yard shy. He had Gates Mouton, but he will be short by a yard, and it's going to bring up first and 10 for Sarah after the game pick up a 19. What a throw. I mean, that's been the most impressive throw that I've seen so far here tonight coming from Chris comes up just short, and the Palo Alto faithful kind of can feel what's uh, going on here. As now Palo Alto still has three timeouts remaining with 450 left, so they're going to have to start using those now, but basically one first down will put an end to this. There Again, goes that's Redwood who Redwood. picks up a gain of about 15 before he's tripped up. And if 
the score or holds the way it is, I'm thinking he's our player of the game. Making the tackle is Keyshawn Johnson for Palo Alto. 4.44 left. So again, the winner will take on the winner of Terra Nova and Bellarmine, which the last update we had was Terra Nova was up 21-7. Haven't heard anything since. So first and 10, and there he will quick pitch it over to Redwood. He's going to stay in bounds, and the flag comes flying out late as Redwood picks up about eight, but we'll see what this is all about. So wait for the call. Let's see the official comes over and will say uh, tripping penalty going against Palo Alto. So that will be 15 yards on top of the 8-yard gain. So it's going to be first down. And this game looks like it's uh, pretty much all wrapped up. Even though there's still 4.15 left, you can see just kind of the body language and the personal foul penalty there. So Redwood will have an opportunity to possibly get in for the fourth time tonight. Well, he's done a great job tonight running the ball for Sarah and keeping those chains moving forward and keeping that offense of uh, Palo Alto off the field. First and ten. Sarah just taking all the time they, they can get. Pitch up the middle here, and Redwood just drags some defenders with them. And he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down, or a few yards shy, second down and uh, about three. Arco is actually the ball carrier there. So second down and about four with 3.28 left. Not trying to get too much yardage here, just trying to keep the clock moving. What a tale of two halves. Adjustments made by Sarah in the locker room have just proved to be huge. It's a game of adjustments. You see something that you can exploit and you take advantage of it. There's a counter play towards the far side to Redwood. He is tripped up near the first down marker. 2.57 left. And it's going to be third down and one as Redwood, I think his fan club is behind this, wants him to get another touchdown because he has three for the night looking for a. Uh, Looking for number four. Well, I think at this point they don't they don't really want to score anymore here with 2:43 left, up 45-28. Just let the clock roll. They're just trying to cl let the clock roll and you know get the first down here, and then you can and take a couple knees. And I don't think Palo Alto will be in position to even call. They have three timeouts remaining, but you figure they won't even call those if they pick up the first here. You would think. Yeah, that's Redwood towards the far side, tripped up right. inside the five. He won't be in, but uh, that will be a first down. And it's going to start the clock again with 219. And that's all they wanted to do was just get that first down. So and these set of downs. So Sarah's going to move on. And Palo Alto will have their season come to an end. The 8-3 and three record, nothing to hang their head about. A great season. They have a great future ahead of them next year, obviously, with uh, Chris coming back. Senior leadership for Chris next year. Some experience. And that is Redwood who gets in the end zone for touchdown number four. So Redwood gets in again. And the score is 51 to 28. And I think it's unanimous who our player of the game is. Well, I think Redwood had a had a heck of a game here tonight and uh, really gave the Palo Alto defense a hard time tonight. I mean, if we're, do, we're talking about player of the games, I mean, we can we can give it to a defensive player. I mean, we, I think we called uh, yeah well, a couple of players' names here tonight. There's a few a couple of them. times via Malepeai, but Redwood really was the difference maker. Yeah, he really was. Anytime they needed a big play, he was the one to get it. And the extra point here from Tom is up and in, and the lead is now 52 to 28. And they have outscored the Vikings by 24 here in the second half. 24 nothing in the second half. So you got to wonder now if they even let Chris go back in with a minute 55 with the 
maybe let uh, someone else get some experience here. I think they'll probably bring him in and let him take some, uh, get ready for next shots downfield and three timeouts. I think right now you just play for pride. Yeah, get a couple of good plays downfield and let your seniors catch some balls. Palo Alto, you got both uh, Justin and Jay Sean Mouton. Seniors will be be their last game here at the high school level. Matt Tolbert as well. Yeah, got to hope they continue their football career somewhere next year, whether it be junior college or higher from that. But definitely some good players here at Palo Alto. I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight, wherever you may be listening from. I know we have listeners all across the world listening uh, listening to family, friends, and if you're an alum, again, thank you for tuning in tonight. This kickoff is returned out to the 30. That's uh, Keyshawn Gates Mouton. Gets it out to the 30 with 147 left, and it is Chris that goes out there. So we'll see what they elect to do, but like you said, you, I think you let it let your seniors go out with a bang. I mean, give them some opportunities here at the end. The Christ will look to throw on first down. He'll go deep and has it complete. <laughs> what a pretty pass. Got that in the Keyshawn Jackson. What a pretty pass. It's like a video game. Put that only where his guy could get it. You talk about the timing and what it takes to throw a pass just like that. It's tough at the high school level. And Chris just well, it shows has what he can that do ability. When he has time. I mean, that any quarterback. I don't care if you're Tom Brady. If you don't have time, you're not going to be able to find anybody. Chris setting up a screen here and overthrows the intended receiver. And he checked down right there. He read the pressure and checked down to his receiver. He checked down to Tolbert on that one. And that will bring up overthrown. Second down. Clock stopped at 138. Chris will head back out there. One thirty eight left here in the season for the Vikings. Chris under center. And he'll look to throw again. And again, he's being chased. And, and this time it's incomplete. Trying to find Jay Sean Gates' boots on, but uh, couldn't hold on to it. And it brings up third and ten. So 134 from the 47. And Chris will line up under center. And fakes the handoff. He's under pressure. He gets out of a sack. Now he's going to scramble. And our mystery man is there to hit Chris first, number 99, before he's finally brought down. He'll pick up about three. It's going to bring up fourth down and seven. And the clock rolling at 117. If they don't pick up a first down here, that will do it, basically, after a couple knees. So the Sarah defense relentless to not give him any space, even here in these final seconds of the game. Chris will look to throw. Fade route in. Was that caught by one hand catch? That was brought in at the 19 yard <laughs> line. <laughs> that was Keyshawn Johnson with the one hand catch. And he's a guy that'll be back next year. He's only a junior, so Chris uh, will have him to look to next year. But wow, what a catch. What a reel in. 58 seconds. Chris uh, will fire deep. Looking for Gates Mouton. A flag comes flying in. And that's going to be an that interference was, call. And was, is it going to be an offensive interference? Uh, I think it was defense. I don't think the defender looked back towards the ball. He kind of gave a shove. 
least that's what I saw. We'll see what the referee calls. It's going to be against the defense. You're right. Yeah, he didn't look back. You got to always make a play at the ball, looking back at the quarterback. And that didn't happen. It brings up. One seconds left at the 14 yard line. Chris, under pressure, is able to elude that. Now he's going to tuck and run, has room, and will be hit and knocked into the end zone. Touchdown, Palo Alto. Chris scrambles in from 14 yards out to bring it to 52 34. But Palo Alto showing no quit as Chris took a hit there as well, but uh, was able to get in. So the extra point coming here. Snap is good. Extra point is good. And Fogue is able to knock that one through. Fifty-two thirty-five, and Palo Alto uh, will go for the onside kick here and won't give up until the end, but they'll definitely attempt the onside kick and see if there's somehow they can recover this. Coaching staff looking uh, one final pitch here, special teams. really dampened here. It was really a, a lively crowd, <laughs> and understandably so. Their team trailing 52-35, but the Palo Alto crowd was really in, into it up until now, and now it's kind of a somber. Well, they they got a score. They hadn't scored since the uh, third quarter of play, since they started the second half of play, and it took a quarter and almost two quarters for them to get into the end zone. So you got to credit that defense. Sarah defense. If they don't receive this onside kick, it's going to be a Sarah kneel down. Here comes the onside attempt. They line up here towards the near side. Kick is up and fielded, and we have a penalty marker down. I believe it may be an offsides. But uh, quarterback Kazakov is able to uh, fall on it. So we'll get this uh, penalty marker all situated. And you got to think uh, Sarah maybe took off a little too soon. Yeah, it is an offsides penalty. So Palo Alto will uh, be called for the offside penalty and. this with a dead ball. Yeah, they're going to bring that back five yards probably. So 40 seconds remaining. They're getting this final play resolved after that offside fell out to uh, moved a little too quick. I'm just a little confused why they weren't able to just decline that. Maybe a dead ball? Yeah, penalty? penalty. That's what I'm thinking, but I didn't see him stop the play when the kick was made. But we'll get another kick here. Palo Alto will try it again. Kick is fielded again by an upman of Sarah. And that was fielded by Matt Jacobs, who falls on it. Big and man. That should do it. Big man had some pretty good hands there, huh? Going forward and getting that ball. So we'll just have a kneel down here, and that should be all she wrote, it's assuming that Palo Alto doesn't call a timeout. I think they wouldn't here with this one pretty much 
said and done, 52 to 35 is where we are. Sarah will move on. Three formation and it's gonna that's go good. Should do it. I think they may have to take one more. As referees are, you know, they're gonna say that's it. So the ball game is over. 52 35. Sarah wins it and they'll move on. Meanwhile, Palo Alto will have their season come to a close, but uh, a great season for those guys. They have nothing to hang their head about. So we'll take a break. We'll come back with our player of the game. We're gonna grab Eric Redwood had four touchdowns and had uh, over 200 yards rushing. And again, your final score, 52 to 35 with Sarah moving on. We'll come back in just a bit here on PlayOnSports.com. Get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? You start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP.
get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP.